and welcome to the Computer Game Show. My name is Sean Bell. I'm joined by Matt Murray. Awooga! And James Farley. Hi. The whole Awooga thing, I first heard that, that was Craig Charles on the Cyberzone. Have you ever watched that? I thought it was Chris Akabusi. But yeah, it was a Chris well, Akabusi. Yeah, this is the thing. I think most people know it through Chris Akabusi. But I, yeah, uh, Craig Charles used to host this incredibly bad uh, BBC show uh, called the Cyber Zone, I where it was that. all people doing VR challenges. And yeah. goodness me, if you, I mean, it didn't look amazing at the time. But if you look up <laughs> now, it's incredible. But yeah, Craig Charles used to like storm in wearing this big like leather trench coat, and he'd show oh, and chuck it into the uh, audience. Yes. It was incredible. That's, that sounds like a. A TC just talks over. We should. It do. actually does. I was thinking that as I was <laughs> saying. <laughs> or, or something you could do at EGX. You know, it's uh, yeah, like just that, for yeah. a laugh. Yeah. Not even as part of the show. Just, just when you're walking around. Yeah, yeah. Just I might do chucking that. Chucking a little trench coat at people. Yeah, why not? Um, speaking of bonus content, James, you've recorded the first episode of, of uh, Star Calls, haven't you? We have. It's done. It's in the. It's in the bag. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, so I'm looking forward to that coming out because it was quite interesting. It was it didn't go entirely as I was expecting, but it was um, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to how Dave's going to react. I really am. Yes, yeah. uh, no, same. Yeah, his impressions that he told me about what he was expecting were not really what I was <laughs> expecting, and just it's really fascinating to hear like somebody discuss like the story of something for which they've only heard like fleeting bits. Of, and yeah. they've kind of constructed what they think it means in their head, and it's like well, this is because this is fascinating to me as well. Because my friend Cami, who emails in occasionally, he's he's never seen any Star Wars films, but he insists that he doesn't need to because he's heard everything you would ever need to know about Star Wars via just people in general. Yeah, and I I think that's ridiculous. So <laughs> well, as you'll so, yeah. hear from from this, uh, yeah, I think yeah. It, this kind of bears out what you think, uh, Sean. Yeah. So it's <laughs> cool. <laughs> Yeah, it was good. Um, so that will come out soon, I think. Yeah, I also I, did. I can't wait to see. Oh god, sorry. I was going to say I also did my first cooking stream. You last absolutely week. did, was... yeah, and like I've got to say, congratulations! You absolutely smashed. It, it was amazing. <laughs> Thanks, I couldn't believe how well it went. To be honest, yeah, it, it was because it was like because you know we, we mentioned before like getting sort of mildly nervous before streams and stuff, um, but actually you realise that like oh no, this is completely different now, and this is this is much more nerve wracking. Um, I mean, you also had like, multiple cameras. It was like, did. but technically, it all did. worked perfectly well. There was no like, yeah. it just worked so well. It's brilliant. It was, yeah. I was just sort of really pleased with like what I managed to sort of chuck together with some spare webcams and and what have you. It seemed to work. Yeah, and and, and you cooked <laughs> the, you cooked a dish. You didn't like burn the dish or forget a key yeah. ingredient. Two two dishes, mate. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it works. I've still got a massive sticky toffee pudding in the fridge that needs eating. Well, that, so. that, that survived yesterday. I assume you were on the couch scoffing the lot. It oh, mate, it's big. huge. Oh, Absolutely okay. massive. Yeah, I had like a third of it, which is probably still more than I should have, to be oh, honest. Right. Four... Next time you should have like a copy of like today's paper for scale, because I just thought, oh, okay, well, that's, that's probably not that big. <laughs> <laughs> for the next one, are you going to be continuing with the product placement for the, for the next one? I mean, as I say, it wasn't really intended as product placement. It was just me just recommending. I'm sure things. the people at Morrison's are very happy this morning. <laughs> and weight rose. Apart from, yeah, <laughs> yeah, apart from like people who are looking for asparagus. Yeah. That was the. Very... <laughs> um, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah um, no, it's unbelievable. And for anyone listening and you haven't seen it, uh, you can go to our Twitch channel or YouTube and and, and find the first episode of Bell's Kitchen. Uh, it, was it was unbelievably good. It was also quite family friendly. Um, up until the end, yeah, sure, when you dropped a couple of f bombs. Uh, but that did that I? Was, yeah, just towards the end, it was, which is fine. But yeah, worst thing okay. that was the chat because the chat was obviously also. Uh, yeah. I was going to yeah, say we yeah, were yeah, hiding the, the chat. If the kids were in the room. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it, it was great. It was yeah, it was very good. Yeah, but, um, me, Joe, and Elodie were in the lounge watching it on the TV, and um, mm. yeah, I mean, yeah. Elodie can't read uh, the word "fucking" in the chat, thankfully, because it was all over it. Uh, she heard you. <laughs> oh, Rachel definitely can. It's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying fuck it, <laughs> um, but yeah, but it, it is that is just it's brilliant. I mean, we had, I had you must have like I think 75 viewers at one point, and yeah, consistently yeah. like 50 and 60 is uh, it was brilliant. Yeah, I loved it. Um, Cheers, man. Do, do you think for do you think like the people saying, oh, like could it could it be a cook along? Could we get a recipe beforehand? I know that probably adds more more pressure. That um, was sort of, yeah, because I was thinking that, yeah, if people start, like, missing... Like, if I've not been 100% clear about something, then people are going to be in the chat going, hang on, wait, what are you doing? I haven't done this. Are you and using then, metric yeah. or imperial measurements? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I don't know, I was worried that might sort of break the flow, whereas if people want to cook along, like, after the fact, obviously you can just pause the video, rewind or, or whatever. Um, 
Yeah. So I, have, I don't know. You I'm, should have shown I'm, off the apron more, Sean, because the apron was brilliant and we didn't fun, get to see the logo so much. It was you know. fun fact about the apron. Did you notice that it was like quite like high up? It's quite tight around my neck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's because it turns out the neck on it is adjustable, and I didn't realise. So I, <laughs> oh. so I'd just been like tying it really tight around my back and like pulling it, and I was like, "Oh, why does it keep going loose?" It kept going loose because it was just transferring. It was like just pulling more of the the cord from the the neck, so it was just like really tight. Just throttling yourself, so that was, basically. That was weird. Yeah. But yeah, like yeah. a fully on brand embroidered uh, apron. Some people were actually asking me if they can buy the apron. Um, <laughs> I'm I mean, sure. to be honest, the one I've got, I, I wouldn't be happy selling it. The quality is not amazing. Oh, it's okay. I've um, already found another supplier. Okay, good. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe we could, but yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, but it, it, yeah, amazing. I can't wait for the next one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and obviously, you know, all made possible via our wonderful patrons. Indeed, appreciate yeah. Because obviously, obviously I have to actually go out and buy food to do that. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's a massive help. Cool. Uh, well, speaking mm. of uh, patron, uh, where we've got our patron producers for this show is Alan M. Nash, Barney Sparks, and Steve Garrett. Uh, oh, you're not sticking with Sparkles. Well, Sparkles sounds well, better. Barney Sparkles, <laughs> let's get on to feedback. Yeah, uh, 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 those guys back to that patron, patron.com slash TCGS, of course. Thank you uh, for backing us. Uh, let's get on to feedback. Barney Sparkles, as uh, tweeting, <laughs> it is indeed Barney Sparks, but Barney Sparkles made me sound more like a porn star, so it's much better. Matt said Sparkles when I first wrote in eight months ago, so why stop now? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, nothing if not consistent. Yeah, so I've, I've got a history. Well, thanks. I mean, it's Barney Sparkles. I mean, probably... Hey, thanks, Sparkles. Um, appreciate it, y'all. Uh, Gary Dutton's emailed in uh, regarding that crunch, uh, as we were speaking about the last few weeks, actually. It's been quite mm-hmm. a big topic. Hello, boys. Gary here. Read crunch and the idea that it's unavoidable. As Sean and James said, I think it's down to company culture, poor planning, and over-ambitious goals. I've embedded with us two games for over three years now, and they have a strict anti-crunch culture. Even in the last days of Monument Valley 2, there was no crunching, just well-managed schedules and happy employees, and this is a studio that has seen massive success. I do share Matt's cynicism on the subject of Respawn claiming to be avoiding crunch. I guess there's a small positive to take from seeing a major studio publicly mentioning and denouncing crunch, though, even if in practice there's a chance it's not as cushy a Respawn as they'd like us to think. Well, we'll have an update on that in the news. So, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't seen what I still like, I and mean, I guess different, different cultures, different companies can can change it. I guess historically, mm. crunch is just a way of life. It's just how it's dealt with. But if people like us two who have yeah, like made Monument Valley and some other some other stuff, and and, and they can deal with it, maybe that's a model for others others to do the same. I mean, I like, yeah, like a obviously... smaller company. You can make bigger changes and be much more agile. Yeah, uh, coming like EA and and those sorts of companies, it's obviously harder to move such a you know a massive ship. But um... yeah, totally. Yeah, it's it's obviously none of us being game developers, we can't necessarily comment. But yeah, as as more and more examples come out of people who manage to avoid crunch, you, st- you do start to think. When like... you say that, Sean, I once mm. uh, made a level in Little Big Planet, so I sort of know what it's like. And how, um, how many hours did you put in? I mean, it? there was a lot of crunch in like the, didn't, the five didn't see minutes. Your family for three I loaded weeks. up the game. I was like, oh, this is. I was sleeping. I was sleeping while work. Basically, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> and I, thought, no. I used to make Duke Nukem 3D levels in the build editor. Oh, and oh so. god, I tried the build editor once. It's horrible. It was no. It was fine. It was. It, I I got a book. I had like a book that like explained how the whole thing worked. Oh, and good. It was, no, it was great. It was. I, <laughs> I love building stuff with that. It was. Uh, yeah, I spent ages doing. I played. I probably spent more time doing that than playing the actual game because it was just. It was a good editor. I mean, it was very limited, but it was. You could do quite. A lot I of remember. With it. I tried it once, and then as soon as it got to like, oh, so the way you make interesting shapes is to like make one big shape and then another little shape, and yeah. use the little shape to cut out of the big one. I was yeah. like, Oh no! And you I have know, to like, like quite a common technique but it's just yeah and you had to like put down sector effectors and stuff like that to make them do things <laughs> it was it was great oh, yeah i mean I, when i was young so i used to love making half-life like maps and i also did loads of unreal stuff in unreal ed as it was called at the time and yeah i, I said and like putting out light sources and maps and making sure i didn't leak out in you know, other parts of the map see, I said, yeah because i said loved it i, I, I can't remember what the half like the this i guess maybe it was called source i know the source is the engine but i yeah. can't remember what I used or how I made the Half Life maps, but yeah, me and my mate. Um, in fact, it was Matt Morley who's been mentioned on this <laughs> show uh, in the past. It, like, it, we're both like massive into Half Life and also like, Team Fortress Classic as it's now known, and we're like making mm. yeah, like 
not 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 mods. I think he went on to do loads more of that stuff. But making Half Life levels, making multiplayer levels, Team Fortress levels. I, I mean, I, I made loads of Counter Strike levels as well. I mean, they never got further than our, our computers, but uh, it was still amazing. See, yeah, I, and Unreal um, as well, which is also really good fun. Because I had a, a brief uh, go at making levels for Quake Two, and being like a te- like a, I must have been about like thirteen years old, something like that, and. I was just like, oh, well, I'll start by just trying to build like a place that I'm familiar with. I know, I'll do my high school. Yeah. And I mean, that never, like, I only did like the sort of entrance hall and that was about it. But Christ, that could have gone really badly, <laughs> couldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> What's his kid doing for to scale model of, <laughs> yeah, of the I'm school? recreate my high school shot. so I can run around and, yeah. and shoot. Yeah. yeah what, like, yeah. you hitting the gun, Sean? Where yeah, yeah exactly. So that, that yeah, that could be really bad. Boy, uh, found like, I'm with, pretty sure murder people simulator. Been, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure people have been expelled for the similar. So mm. yeah. yeah, laziness but, um, wins yet again. Yeah, damn. Um, Thomas at Lumfluff42. Picking up on the point James made last week, I reckon as we get older and more time poor, we get increasingly intolerant of any friction to the gaming experiences. Um, patches faff to set up the tv etc so is the switch increasingly becoming the only platform that makes sense to a certain audience um, there's something in that isn't there there is yeah i mean although i, I think the, for the, the older game it just makes so much so much sense yeah there is although i've got a, again i've got a counterpoint to that later on because okay yeah i've had a different experience this week so <laughs> oh, yeah. but in, experience but in general, week. it has been like that for weeks for me now like just yeah. i only feel like playing on switch just because it's easy and yeah. uh you know i've got to mess around well, no, for me, I feel like playing on PS4 and Xbox, but I just don't get as much time, so I just invariably yeah. play more. I, I, if there's like an indie game out or something on Switch, I'm I play so much, like five to ten times more of that than I can waiting for the PS4 to be free. Oh, you know, well, waiting for like, the TV yeah. to be free and stuff because you can do it, you know, at any point. So it's just so much yeah, better. Totally. That way, but we've covered that. And like, just the fact that. I mean, again, this is. I mean, this, yeah, this is a weird argument to make. I'm not saying it's good that no one plays anything online on the Switch, really, but you know, like with a, a PS4 game or whatever, you boot it up and it's like, oh, there's an eight gig patch, um, and yeah. if you don't, you know, if you want to play the game without installing the patch, you can't do anything online, and you're just like, ah, God's sake. Whereas on the Switch, it's like, there's a patch. Do you want to launch the game anyway? Yeah, probably doesn't make any difference, does yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> also the patches on that download like really quickly as well. I was going to well. say, yeah, like, has a patch ever yeah, taken really more tiny, than like five seconds to download? I mean, it's it's yeah. like having an Xbox 360 again, you know, where it's like the patches are like a reasonable size and, you know, it's not mm-hmm. like you have to download the entire game again. It's, um, yeah. yeah, they're good. Sorry, this isn't podcast related at all. I've just seen that Jeremy Corbyn's back in a second record referendum. Oh, really? <laughs> is, it, is he though? <laughs> Well, he's probably just seen the European Parliament <laughs> results. But is it officially, <laughs> or is he saying like it's on the table? Is that what he's yeah, saying? Yeah. It's an option we're considering. That's what yeah. he's going to be again. <laughs> also, the way he started that, like, uh, I totally thought you were going to say he had died. It's like, no, I've just oh, seen brother, yeah. Jeremy Corbyn has. I thought he was going to be resigning because, uh, yeah, it's well, that, that also wouldn't mad. surprise me at this point. Uh-huh. But um, uh-huh. sorry, yeah, video games. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, on last week's show. I, I got mocked off totally by Pooh in the week, uh, which I'll come to in a minute, because <laughs> I dare I, cause I, I dare to think that the caddy in Everways Golf was weird. And I've talked to other people this week, I've played a game, so yeah, Matt, it is definitely a bit weird. And uh, Actually, I don't know who you're talking to, Matt, because I've played the game and it is not weird. It, like, it, it's not even remotely as, as weird as you're making it out to be. I've, I mean, we'll get on to this. I also found it weird. Okay, <sighs> good. Well, anyway, but, well, yeah. let's see what everyone else has said in a week. Mark Jeffries, Matt, just so you know, Starbucks write everyone's name on their cup. They're not flirting with you. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, Thomas Lomoff Love again. The highlight of this week's show, Matt's awkward dalliance with the caddy woman. Does he get this nervous <laughs> The Satnav lady. No, because <laughs> because like Satnav lady isn't a three D model next to me asking if I want to like get closer to look at the scores on the the tablet. Anyway, but yeah, yeah, Satnav that. actually did like a three D projection of a woman sat next to you in the car offering you chocolates. Yeah, yeah, that'd be or, a bit or, much. Or if the, the Satnav woman was like, "Oh, come over here to see what speed you're doing," because I know I can see the speed now. And come over here to just lean in next to me to see the speed like, no I can <laughs> so I've not ben, experienced this like uh, trying to get you to get closer to her or anything like that have you not done the golf, the golf buggy bit no I've not sat in okay. a golf buggy with her okay well that's that, that's what I mean the, the chocolates one James come on yeah that's the one, one I was like yeah this have is you, you haven't seen that one either no so what ones have you seen 
I've only seen the one with the uh, going across the oh, bridge. Well, 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 then you can't comment about it if it's being weird because you haven't done any of the weird shit. <laughs> but it's <laughs> not. This week. No, no, also, anyway. I did another one where we were standing up in like um, oh, something. Oh, I don't know how to explain what it is. We were standing in a raised platform and watching the sunset. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, the, the one on, on on the beach level. Yeah, yeah. And like it's a just She's like, look, it's a nice sunset. And I'm like, yeah, she's right. It's quite nice. But it's... that is a bit like, I'm here to play golf. So, sorry, James, what? you sat and watched a sunset with another woman. And she went, yes, this is an objectively pleasant experience. Yeah, with no like, emotional like, connotations or romantic. Like, it's fine. It's it's fine. It's, like, it's, I was just like, it's fine. It's not bothering me. Like, I don't know, why, <laughs> I don't know why, why this would bother you. I just don't understand it. <laughs> I just felt it weird. Anyway, a Ben Syme uh, Asantologist tweeting, I've just watched some videos of everybody's girl VR, and that cuddy stuff, that caddy stuff is not as remotely creepy as Matt was making out. Ben, that doesn't count, because you, you can watch a video of anything and it's not as creepy. If you've got a fully yeah. 3D woman next to you, or a 3D anything, it's just like, there's a presence there, and it's, you, yeah. it, that, so, that does not count. Absolutely. Area count. X in res via a TV is not a transcendental yeah, experience. Yeah, because like, oh yeah, I watched Airx on YouTube. The- <laughs> it, it was, it was it's all right. It's just like some colours and shit. It's like, no, you yeah. don't. Yeah, so yeah. Ben Syme absolutely does not count. Um, yeah, I, I, okay, we'll talk about more of Voice Golf later, but um, mm. yeah, I, 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 I just think if anyone's played this and done the things that I've seen in that game, I think it is just a bit weird. Done and the things that you've seen? I mean, you just, <laughs> you just said like I told you like you're you traumatised by this. It's just... Utterly no, bizarre. No, I mean, the scenes and the chocolate and the golf, the golf bug in there's, you know. But why like, are you scared okay. of that? I don't understand. I'm not scared of it. It's I'm not just saying. Scary. It's, it's just weird. Yeah, it's, it's just <laughs> weird. Yeah. What's wrong with being offered a couple of chocolates? I don't get that. I'm here to play golf and like <laughs> because she's like, oh, come here and get the chocolate, and you lean in, and she's like, oh, I'm only joking. Yeah, yeah. it's a totally <laughs> like girlfriend simulator. <laughs> it totally is. <laughs> I'm anyway. really upset actually because um, I haven't listened to it yet, but <laughs> this is the title right, of this week's like kind of funny games for us. Everybody's golf for is a dating sim, so I'm clearly clear they're going along the same sort of lines I am. Yeah, mm. it, it's weird, James. Anyway, I'm sure we'll cover it later. Uh, last week we we're talking like, oh, has 2019 had, had many great games? And we we're talking about what are some of our, our favourites from the year so far. I see Alan. What massive games have there been? Devil May Cry Five. Yeah, we t- we none of us played that, did we? We skipped no. that, didn't we? Yeah. Completely. I've not. Uh, again, it's one of those where it came out, and then some people were like, "Oh, this is great," and then a week passed, and I've not heard anyone discuss it since. So it's not. I don't know. It's not made a, an imprint upon me. Um, I gather it is very good, though. Yeah, I, just, I mean, it's just. I, I mean, James, I thought you'd be into it. That's like a Japanese style game. So yeah, it's another one. It's another one that's a bit like Resident Evil 2 that I keep. I do mean to play at some point. It's just I haven't had time yet. And, Can't um, be asked. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it is that. You've got so much free time yeah. on your hands, James. Yeah. Just... <laughs> well, it's also not. It's also not cheap, is it? Like it's. No. It's yeah. You know, when it's like cheap, probably I'll get it. But at the moment, nope. Yeah, nope. Um, uh, John Kadembi and his Twitter name is Vibrating Bombface Goat. Um, Nice. Uh, tweet. Listen, has James tried PS Now yet? Still the same issues for me with the lag and frame rate, so streaming anything like a big racing game is a total waste of time. Downloadable games are obviously fine and a big step forward, but uh, not not all are. Not sure why. Did you get to play PS Now this week, James? I have, and I'll be talking about it in what you've been playing. I'll take, okay. mm-hmm. Is that every answer? Just we'll talk about it later. <laughs> <It makes sense. laughs> well, it's, I did t- look, look, Matt, if no you have comment. a look, if you have a look at what you've been playing, you can see what I've played this week. <laughs> Should I put it in there? <laughs> So oh, you yeah. could have just like not asked these questions. Like, what was I, the point? I prefer the idea of doing an entire episode where we just procrastinate. So we read out every email and then we just sort yeah. of go like, oh, can we talk about this later? I'll yeah, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cover this later. Even at the end, we're like, well, we'll, we'll cover this later. No, the pod's about to end. We'll cover it later. We, we will cover it later. Um... Uh, 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 Rogue Division Agent Bwartang at Bwartang on Twitter can we get a timestamp on Days Gone not being a Gotti contender you know just so when the Gotti show is being recorded and it may get a mention it, it may be right at the top it may be right at the top Imagine I mean I, I played it this week got, so when we'll you've got, got Matt Murray on your show anything is possible <laughs> anything is possible oh yeah just so everyone James is going to talk about it later so uh, yeah okay <laughs> do you think here that James isn't going to talk about it later no that's pretty much it uh, found some <laughs> feedback this week it's at Computer Game Pod on Twitter or you can email podcast at thecomputergameshow.com James have you seen The Fifth Element no I haven't have you not you haven't oh, seen mate. no oh. no I have seen The Fifth Element it was a long okay. time ago though Stone Cold yeah, Classic yeah, do you remember is... um, so the bit 
where the fifth element, the supreme being, is like because she's just been sort of resurrected. She's like catching up on all of human history to figure out what's up. Yeah. Um. And basically, it turns out that when you you read like all of human history in one go, she's like on the internet. She's on a computer, and she's like flip because she can read really fast because she's a you know supreme being or whatever. She's just going and it's all just like bombarding her. And it turns out when you view all of human history in that way, most of it's really horrible mm-hmm. and. And it's basically her being like, oh my God, they're really self-destructive and fucked up and uh, this is horrible. And she's like, like tears running down her face as she's going through all these stories and internet pages and there's all pictures of tanks. And and basically by the end, she's like an emotional wreck because it turns out humanity is not that great. Um, can you give me that experience, please, whilst delivering the news? So you want me to bombard you with horrible news? Yeah, basically, I just want to, by the end, I just want to have lost all faith in humanity. You, you won't be disappointed. I've got an anthem cool. update. So hey! it's, uh, yeah, oh, great. So, it's, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, but I'll come to that later. Um, the first thing... <laughs> okay, so the first story is actually about the Ouya. So the Ouya game store is going to close for good next month. And mm-hmm. this, I mean... This, oh, it's, no. I mean, it was four, it's four years after the console launched and it's Razer that owns them now. And they're getting rid of this and also Forge TV and Mad Cat's Mojo. I didn't even know what those were. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, we're, you know, we're all laughing at the Ouya, but I've not even heard of these other two. So. Are you they're not also playing Mad Cat's stores. Mojo every week? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope all so my Mad Cat's Mojo points aren't going to be lost. This is, I'll be livid. Well, this is the thing, because if you've got money in your account on Ouya or any of these, then you, you can't withdraw it. Like, you've, you've basically lost it, so you might as well just download whatever games you can before then. <laughs> and they're saying you've got to download everything before the deadline, or you'll okay. lose like, whatever you've got. Um, I mean, Sean, you've got one of these, haven't you, still? I have. It was uh, back in the... Must be, yeah, God, yeah, it must be back in the Joypod days. A, a listener kindly sent me one. Yeah. Um, and I, I was considering, I mean, obviously, by the time this episode goes out, you'll know if I did it or not. I was considering doing my Tuesday stream of just, just plugging the New Year in and just being like, let's see what happens when you turn a New Year on in 2019. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure where the power supply is for it. So I don't know if that'll happen or not. You should um, do that. Because you should do that before this happens. Because that'd be quite interesting. Yeah. Well, well yeah. You should just do be... it on the last night. It'll be like, it'll be <laughs> blowing up on Twitch. All the, uh, all the, pre- all the Ouya owners. <laughs> All three of them. Um, yeah, so interesting. I mean, like, it Did wasn't it shit, the Ouya. It was an okay idea. It's like, the, you know, the idea of just like a tiny Android console that you could just download and play. Like, there's, there's some, if I remember rightly, we had a good couple of evenings on it just playing like same screen multiplayer stuff. Um, and it was absolutely fine. Um, there was just no reason to really. I mean, I'd be interested to see when like the last released game was. It must have been a while now, right? It's probably like a week after launch. <laughs> um, so yeah, it wasn't terrible. It was just, I mean, the controller's pretty horrible, like even to look at. Um, never mind use. See that? That's um, the thing I remember hearing about it was that the controller was was like garbage, like really really yeah. bad, and uh, yeah, like it's not, not great. what people were hoping for. And because yeah. they they'd made that big deal about how they'd spent ages designing the controller and it was going to be like amazing and then it was yeah it was awful yeah i mean the the sticks and buttons are fine the d-pad's a bit squishy um it does this weird thing where the so the batteries in order to put the batteries in you actually take um like the face plate off the front like between like two sections and it's only like magnetized to the controller which is weird um and i still you know the console itself this weird little cuboid thing that's quite cool um <laughs> But yeah, what a shame! It's it's completely utterly dead now. Was it was it easy to mod like to like do stuff to it? That's a good question because I was wondering if it's still going to have life like that. If you know what I mean, yeah. Because like, if I could just put it. a different Android, because it runs on Android, doesn't it? I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So yeah, so if I could just put a different Android ROM on it, that'd be interesting. But um, don't know. How about you, Matt? Were you ever tempted by an Ouya? I- absolutely not. No. I- oh, this was pretty much. <laughs> you know, this is in like, the heyday of Kickstarter, wasn't it? This is when it was. It all- was kicking off but uh no yeah. oh, wait, um, i mean that's the thing because they made like it was eight million like um eight million dollars or whatever they made from the kickstarter but then apparently they burned through like 25 million pounds of investment and then had like loads because what happened was they shipped the like shipped the units to the backers but then nobody else cared like they didn't nobody else wanted to buy them 
And uh, then, yeah, they just ended up with loads of debt. And then Razer came and bought them. And uh, But Razer only bought the software. They didn't buy any of the hardware stuff. So Okay. But it's the... interesting because I was just looking at, so the other, yeah, the, the Ford TV and the Mad Cats Mojo. So they're basically the same thing. They're just other Android micro consoles. And it looks like the Ford TV was actually Razer's own thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if I don't know if they bought the UU and then they used the software to make the the Forge TV or, or whatever. But yeah, it looks like they're just getting rid of all three in one go. Shame, shame. Mm. I mean, um, Madcast Mojo's great, great store, great yeah. great store. Okay, do you want some happy news? Yes. yes. Okay, so the other thing that happened last week, um, just after we recorded, was there was the re- the reveal of the the play date. So yeah. This is the new handhelds that's got a crank like with it, <laughs> and it's developed by it's like it's uh, Panic who they were the ones that published like Firewatch, and they're also mm. publishing the Untitled Goose Game like later. Uh, and they've been making yeah. software for like twenty years on yeah, Mac yeah. and iOS, it's like yeah. Mac and iOS stuff. And so it's in it's like basically it seems to be like an indie focused handheld. It's got like a D pad, like two buttons, this two point seven inch black and white screen. It's got like the Wi Fi, Bluetooth, USB C, and all that kind of stuff. And like they're they're sort of selling it as being like it's not supposed to be like challenging consoles or the Switch or anything like that, but it's supposed mm-hmm. to be like a gap between phones and home console games. <clears throat> but yeah. the the main thing that's really interesting about it is that games are going to be released in seasons. So there's like twelve. There's going to be twelve games in the first se- season, and then, so when you buy it, there'll be one game available, and then each like week, uh, a new one will get unlocked like at the beginning of each week. And I mean I. That's the thing I think is genius because what mm. is really cool about that is that means you're going to get loads of people playing the same game at the same time, which yeah. that's a really good thing because so we don't loads get of that. chatter about that game every week and exactly yeah because we, we, we don't get that so much because that was one of the things that was really cool when uh, Xbox Live first began and there wasn't that many games and it was like we just went from one game to another basically like over like several months but everyone mm. was playing the same thing everyone was talking about it and it was that was brilliant and yeah so I think. That's a genius idea. It's a, it's a really good idea, and it's they've got all these indie developers making stuff for it. There's um the first game that comes with it is called Crankin's uh time travel adventure uh, time travel adventure sorry which is by um Keita Takahashi from like Katamari mm. Damacy. So they got like Sean Inman, like Zach Gage, and loads of people making stuff for it. So it's I, I think it looks very interesting. I mean I'm not sure if I'm going to get one. Um, apparently they're going to be very limited. Oh, I, but... I, I I totally am. Really? Oh okay. yeah. I think yeah. yeah so they're going to was... be. What, 120 just... quid? What, 149 dollars? I don't well, even know if it actually yeah. said it's, the UK it's, price, yeah, but it's 149 dollars. So that's around 120 quid. So I'd expect it to be about 150 in the UK. <laughs> yeah, they, exactly. yeah. It always I seems just, to be like, now just so... add 30 quid and then you've got the price. You know, it's... I mean, basically. So my when I first saw it, like my initial reaction was just like, what? <laughs> but then after a bit, I was like, actually, when was the last time I thought that when presented with a new yeah. games thing? Like probably the Wii. It's probably mm-hmm. the last time where I was just like, what the fuck is this? Um, it was the same for the Wii that, U as well. Yeah, <laughs> for different <laughs> reasons. Um, but I just, yeah, I was just like, do you know what? That that uncertainty, that that bafflement is is worth celebrating in and of itself, I think. Um, I mean, it's worth pointing out. So yeah, so this has come from Panic, but they're, for the hardware, they're working with Teenage Engineering. Yeah. Do, it's the Swedish um, like, engineering company, isn't it? Yeah, and they, they do lots of interesting, like, uh, I know a friend of mine buys like they do a lot of music based stuff like weird little pieces of hardware that, you know in like weird little synthesizers and stuff and he he loves everything they do and it, it's all really nicely made so I absolutely yeah, love the this way is... this thing looks I love the fact you can see yeah. it all like the Allen key is sort of like the way it's screwed together <laughs> it looks a bit, and, and yeah it's just like yeah, well, the yellow is one we've seen. I'm not sure if they're going to do other colours, but I, mm. it's it's not industrial. But I just love the way you can see the working parts, and it just, yeah, it's literally mean, yeah. unusual. Um, mm. it, it, I mean, like and the, 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 yeah. the crank as well. So, did we all assume this was a battery thing? At first? Definitely. As soon as I saw it, I, I thought, thought yeah. so. Yeah, could you wind it up to power not. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It turns out it's actually just part of the controller. I mean, I mean, it only needs like one good fishing game, and I'm I'm sold. I mean, so, <laughs> do you know? You know, like Edge had a really, they had a really good feature actually on this because they they, they got... did. I, I bought Edge for the first oh, time. Yeah, I really, really, really like, about this. Um, Jen Sim was saying like it's sold out online. Edge magazine. Some people saying it's hard to find in stores. I'm definitely going to pick up a copy. Have yeah, you read no, it yet, I, Sean? Uh, I've read most of it. I I just grabbed the the digital version because it's quite it's really nice on the iPad with the yeah. videos and stuff. So, yeah, because um, I got I got yeah. the subscription through that, and it's um yeah, oh, it, yeah. it looks really nice. And also, you get like the extra stuff like when you you know like when you 
uh, like looking at like previews and stuff, and then you can like click on the video or whatever, so you have yeah. got a better idea of what it actually is, you know, as yeah, well, which, yeah, is, yeah. which is kind of good. But the yeah, the, the anyway. feature is really good, though. It's really interesting. I mean, especially, mm. I mean, they're talking about the fact that they don't see this as being, they're not expecting this to be like a massive success, and actually, yeah. they don't really care that much about that. And it, you really, <laughs> you really seem to get that this impression that they're making this for themselves more than anything. Yeah. It's like something they thought would be interesting. They're not. It's not betting the company on it or anything like that. Yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. And even when they talk to Takahashi about it, he's just like they said to him, like, "Is this going to be a success?" And he's like, "Honestly, no, I don't think so." But it's, <laughs> but it's, but it's really interesting, and it's really cool that this kind of thing exists as well. So I, I think these are going to be hard to get hold of, man. Oh, oh definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely. Because yeah. they, yeah, they probably won't make like tons of them will they so it'll mm-hmm. be um, exactly. yeah. I, I like the fact on the website it said like sign up to be notified and it says the sooner you sign up sooner we can notify you implying it's like there's, there'll be a list you know like an ordered list mm. not just everyone gets the email yeah. at the same time a, a couple of things so one it's not backlit screen which is I guess disappointing but understandable you know they, they want to save money on that I guess um, mm-hmm. in like the feature, feature you've read James does it mention anything about Obviously, I said about season one, and so mm-hmm. you would assume also a season two and so on and so forth will, will be coming. Do we know whether that will come to this this device or will we have to buy new devices? Do we assume I can just get season two content when that arrives on the same machine, or is there any indication of that yet? No, none at all. Like they don't, yeah. they don't, because they also don't explain. Yeah, they don't explain sort of like if there is going to be like a forward like pricing structure or anything like that it's just like if you buy this then you get the first season but yeah there was no detail at all about the uh, yeah. what's happening next because mm. in some ways i would i mean i guess think oh maybe they'll do a different one per season uh with like a unique like control system or like a different mm-hmm. sort of device design yeah, almost for those games each time. Yeah. yeah you know and, and if they like they they obviously getting developers to work on this 100 and, well they say it's 150 quid yeah, you know, for like ten games. Yeah, like fi- yeah, fifteen quid a game. Um, I wonder if that is just what it would cost, and it would be like a unique niche thing. And season mm. two would require a new device. Who knows? But yeah, I- I'm really excited for this. It just looks, it looks absolutely bonkers. When I, f- I was like you, Sean, when I first saw this, I'm like, <laughs> what is this? I-, I love it. It's just, it's so <laughs> out there. And but I, yeah. I can't believe really people. Are people honestly arguing or talking about this like, oh, this is like a competitor to a Switch? It clearly isn't what? that at all. No, it's not that at all. all. It's that's no. totally not the intention. Uh, yeah, it's so- it's yeah, it's a, something we've not seen for a long time, which is a handheld console that is a toy first. I think is the, yeah. the difference. Like, it's just something inherently playful about it. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 excited. Yeah, it looks absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, so yeah. that's our early 2020, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, God, yeah, which is ages off. Yeah, but yeah, that, 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 that's going to be hard to get hold of. To make the games, that's going to be hard to get hold of. That is. Yeah, yeah, totally. Cool. What else we got, James? Okay, next story uh, is that Knights of the Old Republic is apparently there's going to be a film of it, which is oh, um, shit. which is as in of the game or yes. in in the setting. Okay. As in, yeah, as in, because as, so Buzzfeed have reported that there's like a script being written um, by Lita Kalo, uh, Greedis I mean, mm-hmm. She did like Shutter Islands, Alisa, and Alter Carbon and stuff. And okay. apparently, it's going to be a trilogy. Oh, and, shit. and none of this, I mean, okay, so Lucasfilm haven't said that it's definitely happening, but it, that it is one of the projects they're looking at as being like a like possibility for it. So, I mean, it's not sort of cast iron, definitely going to happen yet. But um, yeah, it does look interesting. I mean, mm. I know, I quite like the idea of this. So, so yeah, I mean, obviously, you wrote the story, I presume, right? Is that? Yeah. 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 Um and obviously we know the twist from the first one. Yeah. Um and the second, come to think of it. Um what's interesting though is yeah, if this is a if this is a trilogy, mm-hmm. so obviously um yeah, so the first one's brilliant. The second is really interesting but unfinished. Yeah. It was good though. <laughs> it was really good though. I still yeah, really yeah. enjoyed it, although it did yeah, it did feel unfinished. Yeah. Um it and had, then I, yeah. I think it had more interesting characters. Like there was yeah, a definitely. there was a lot of sort of more ambiguity about like motivations and stuff that I thought was interesting. Yeah, totally. Um and then yeah, then we it was sort of suggested we were getting a third one, but we never did. Um so yeah, you know, if the legacy is that actually we just get a trilogy of films instead, and if the second one gets to tell the story that the second game was supposed to, um and then we get some sort of resolution to the story in the third well, film. There That'd is, be cool. There is a resolution to the story, though, isn't it? Because the Knights Republic, Old Republic Online, did that as what I oh, understand. Does it? Yeah, uh, you can bollocks. you can play <laughs> you can play through that. Like people have, I mean, I've been told you can like play through that as if it's like Knights of the Old Republic three. You know, and it's like it does 
like continue things on. Oh, and don't to tell me that. It. I'm going to download that now. Yeah, is, is it free to play? I, I think uh, to a certain point. Yeah. Okay. I think it's one of those. It's like up to a certain level or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it still won't be the same, will it? I mean, it's an MMO. It's it's still yeah. not going to be. You know. I don't know, which is a shame. What do you think, but, Matt? But, yeah, but you'd assume they'll make a third game to coincide with this, right? Surely. I don't know. I it seems, seems like to be difficult a, to get anyone a, to make Star a, Wars games these days. I guess, yeah. but if it's like a, if it's a third code or game, yeah, film, uh, if it's a trilogy of films, like surely. Well, look, I mean, it should be. I mean, we don't know anything about this, but you know, EA own Bioware. EA also have the Star Wars license. Surely, it's like you'd be thinking yeah. they could like at least re-release them or something. You know, it'd be. Something mm. could be done, but I don't know. It's a shame. Yeah, I, 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 I'm interested. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't. I haven't played those games, so I don't know the twist. Um, oh well, there you go. Well, not... If hopefully the internet won't be like, oh well, everyone knows a twist when this happens. Yeah. Um, hopefully, people will be respectful, and you'll actually get to enjoy. I that. don't think but, that's yeah. going to happen, sure. But they okay. they are very good games. <laughs> I mean, especially the first yeah. one. I mean, people always complain about how it had like a slow start and everything, but I still. Preferred those to the Mass Effect games. I still think they were better. It's, really? Um, okay. Maybe just because it's Star Wars and uh, that sort of helps I know what you a mean. bit. But um, um, yeah, yeah. I, I remember. I remember everyone has said it's amazing. And when that was around the time it came out, and I just wasn't interested or playing other things or whatever, I was like, oh well, it's a bit of a shame we're missing out on this, but whatever. But I, I've sort hmm. of always had the impression in my head that it's been a sort of a uh, an all timer. Do you yeah, think it's in that totally. sort of pamphlet that is like one of your time great games, or it's just an excellent game? Oh, definitely, absolutely, like, yeah. No, it's definitely it's definitely an all time like like great yeah. one. The second one maybe not so much, but the first one definitely. I mean, that it was, was when... the first. The first one was the first game I stayed up until five a.m. playing it once. Oh yeah. wow! <laughs> um, because it was yeah, just just that good. I mean, I I don't know how it's aged. I think you can get them all on iPad now, right? You can you can get them on mm. iOS. They've I mean yeah. they're backwards compatible on Xbox as well. And okay. um, yeah, there's you can play it. I mean, because they're original Xbox games. And uh, right, yeah, yeah, they were excellent. I really like. Uh, I mean, that... the original Xbox games. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! Okay. That's yeah. that old. I mean, that, the, that I always was... remember the the fascinating thing about the second one is that you. So the first one, you start as a normal person, become a Jedi, obviously. The second one, you start as a Jedi, but not quite for reasons I won't go into now. But it's like whenever you're talking to people, there's always dialogue options being like, I want a lightsaber, give me a lightsaber. (laughs) And everyone's just like, the fact that you are so fucking obsessed about getting your lightsaber means you can piss off. This is not... (laughs) like It's just really interesting because it's like, oh yeah, I'm being like really sort of power mad and weird. And that's that's really not a good trait for a decent Jedi. It's just yeah, just fascinating games, mm-hmm. both of them. Yeah, it's, that was when Bioware were like really like smashing these out of the park as well in terms of like yeah. good stuff. Like good there was also days. there was Jade Empire as well, which came out, which I yeah. I really like that. That was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, next story is about Apex Legends um, because Apex Legends is not doing quite as well as it did when it launched. Um, mm-hmm. So their revenue has now fallen by seventy four percent since launch. And this is because in the launch month they were getting around seventy two million like uh, pounds like equivalent like a, mm-hmm. a a month. Now that's down to eighteen million. And this was like Nielsen of like uh, you know they, they've got this firm called Super Data that have compiled the numbers. And because mm-hmm. they also noted because it was it had the strongest start for a free to play game like ever. There's also been like a really strong drop off in like Twitch viewing figures as well. Right. And they seem to think it's because the first battle pass was. Apparently, um, underwhelming. You know that it wasn't. Yeah, okay. I heard that. Yeah, but then they're also hoping that the mobile port is gonna ha- is gonna help, and that season two is gonna get be unveiled at E three. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, but it, the general complaint was about the lack of content. Was they thought that's what's holding it back. But then, yeah. like as we were saying, it's a bit difficult now for for respawn, isn't it? Because they've already said they're not going to overwork their employees. They're not going to like you know keep pushing out loads of content but now it kind of looks like they kind of have to because yeah this This is is the the sad thing isn't it it's like you know when you first discover amazon prime you're like this is amazing how do they manage to do this when no one else does oh it's by nearly killing their employees all the time Mm -hmm. um (laughs) and it's like oh why yeah same thing why isn't apex legends keeping up the keeping pace with Fortnite? oh it's because they're trying to treat people like human beings and yeah Mm. but but, but then like you know like the estimated earnings of eighteen point nine three million pounds in April, 
that's still quite a lot. That's of still money. a lot of cash, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's interesting that it's dropped uh, the way it has. I mean, um, what's also interesting, I mean, from this article, this was like Eurogamer one. They were saying like um, the mobile thing looks like it's like a critical kind of part of it because like even. Like uh, PUBG still rakes in like fifty million pounds like a, a month, like just from Which mobile. Is, it's just insane to me yeah. that that's people's like preferred way. I know. I don't know why you want to play anything on mobile. I just don't understand yeah. it. Like especially anything like that, I don't understand because it's just. But, no, but, 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 but it's, and, it's yeah, not necessarily the... saying that though, is it, Sean? It's the same like purchases. Like, but if I. I'm on my way to work and I don't want to play on my phone, but I'm also not on my console. I will mm-hmm. buy the Battle Pass or maybe I'll look at cosmetics you know, yeah. on, on the train. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy I'll these for ready for tonight. So yeah, it's, it's not just that access to yeah, the, it, it's a store the marketplace. I mean, obviously, yeah, people yeah. I imagine are playing and lots of millions of people playing and enjoying it. But also, mm. it's just like an easy way to get in and have your, you know, your synced game, your synced money or whatever you've earned currency-wise and yeah. make the purchases when you can't properly play on your console or PC. Yeah, no, fair enough. But yeah, mm-hmm. I heard yeah. about the battle pass being pretty underwhelming. I mean, people said that immediately, and also people have been have been frustrated about the lack of updates and and stuff uh, mm-hmm. away from the battle pass. So it will be interesting to see what they do because ultimately these games, you know, thrive and survive on fuckloads of content. Um, maybe they, and if they don't want to over overwhelm their staff, then maybe employ more staff to push out the same amount of content than Fortnite's doing, just with a a lot more people. I mean, mm-hmm. there are ways around it, of course. Ultimately, people want content. You don't have to make your staff suffer for that. I don't think. Surely, they could. There's, there's other ways around it. But mm-hmm. we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll be interested to see what they announce or what they show off at uh, E3. But the mobile thing, it, it feels like a critical, critical element to this for sure. Mm. Okay. Uh, next story is that the Sonic movie has been delayed to next year. So I'm sure we're all yeah, devastated yeah, I mean, to about that. <laughs> To be, I mean, delayed to the Valentine's Day, so I know what I'm doing on February 14th. Well, oh, smash I'm it. disappointed because it was originally going to hit on the 7th of November, which is my birthday, and I could have gone <laughs> see it on my birthday, and now I can't. So that's that kind of that's. Now you can see it in the second best day of the year. That's true. Valentine's Day. It's going to be like you know, what 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 better thing to do with the, the loved one in your life? Yeah, I'd stay Jen to see Sonic. That. <laughs> <laughs> No, she's got to take you to see. Yeah, <laughs> it's training um, teammate. Get with I it. I just, uh, I still just like. Okay, so they're doing this to make Sonic look better or whatever. But it's like, is it going to be a good film? They though? still can't deal with that dialogue. That's already been yeah. recorded. That's the the terrible crap jokes have already been recorded. So there's nothing yeah. they can do about that. So yeah. But I mean, they Paramount have said that they want to use this time to get Sonic just right. You know, so yeah. maybe they're just going to remove his teeth. Or whatever, you know, because that was one of the freaky things about it. But. Yeah, I, I can't wait for the first unveiling of the yeah. new look. <laughs> <laughs> Especially but, if people hate it more than the first one. That'd be. Fun. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's never, it's never be perfect. I mean, if I was them, I'd be like, okay, let's look at all the fan make fan like versions and bring them into the studio and say, you guys together, you do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad this is happening because when they said, okay, we're mm. we're fixing Sonic and they hadn't announced a, a date change to the film, I was like, well, this is insane. Like, how are you yeah, yeah, do so... that? So I'm glad this is happening. Um, yeah. yeah, and I, I still, I'm, I'm very excited to see what I do with it. I still think we should try and do a launch because I think that'd be funny. But yeah, uh, no, yeah. no, no, don't worry. I mean, this gives, this gives me more time to work up some contacts at Paramount. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> if you're not Paramount listening, get in contact. James and I want to uh, go to the premiere dressed up as Sonic. More yeah. Tails, but mostly Sonic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, still looking forward to that film. Okay. No, to be fair, Jim Carrey is Robotnik. I, I do exactly. want to see that. You were saying like, about shitty dialogue. Yeah, it, yeah. It, this is like a family sort of film. I'm not expecting. Yeah, but I don't know, want a I think... family to see shit dialogue. Like it's like it's yeah, just yeah, because fa- the kids won't kids, just know. Give a it's shit. Like... Rubbish, rubbish. <laughs> just because something is for kids doesn't mean it has to be terrible. Like it doesn't. No, you don't no, get. No, yeah, you don't I'm get a, a free pass for that. Like this is. I'm a like... sincere defender of a lot of like cartoons that are supposedly for children, but are actually pretty clever. So I, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, ultimately, we want that, but I'm also like, you know, I, don't, I don't. I'm not expecting this to be like one of the all-time great films. I'm just expecting it to be a fun, kit, fun film, and Jim Carrey is gonna. Carry it, the film basically. Yeah, but I'd rather it was a yeah. fun film that was a good film rather than well, just maybe it will be now. Maybe they'll also rewrite the <laughs> script. <laughs> <laughs> they still won't get rid of that joke about child abduction, which is just really weird. That they oh, yeah. that trailer. Was there one in the trailer? Yeah, there was. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, that was that was really odd. Like in a film, hilarious. Like that. Yeah. yeah. 
It'd be okay. Fun. Uh, last, the last story is obviously an anthem update. Why? Hey. Why, James? Well, it's for you, Matt, because I know you love these stories about anthem. But I, <laughs> there's been basically Reddit have been doing some like working out like how the game's doing. Oh, the Reddit and detectives are on the case. Okay, good. Okay, well, well I mean, because you were complaining, <laughs> James, that I was like giving you press releases of actual information. Now you're getting more information from. Reddit people, because you're so desperate what's, to keep this Reddit, narrative Matt? up. What's this anti anthem narrative. This is what I. Okay. <laughs> I it's consulting it's alternative sources. He's getting. He's doing doing the legwork. I do want proper information, but I do want. It was want, a listener. That told I, me do want underscore, <laughs> I do want underscore Robbie Sif underscore Lord sixty nine to give me the information because <laughs> yeah. it's much better. Either way, this is quite interesting though because I mean this this is not okay. This is not obviously made up because this is this has been researched. Like they've they've looked at this and you know they've concluded what there oh. is and oh, they what it is, they, is. They looked at it, did they? Okay, they, they looked at it. <laughs> so well, no, it's not, not, it's not just it, like, James. This is yeah, it's not just made up. I mean, you can look it up now if you want, Matt. Like you, you can see that it's true. I don't need to. I've got so, Bobby underscore. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, anyway, Anthem has fallen out of the top forty nine games on Xbox One. Uh, on Xbox, rather. So mm-hmm. it's that means it's now behind Battlefield One. Now you don't have; they don't have figures for Anthem for like how many people are playing it, but there are figures for how many people are playing Battlefield One, and there's less than two thousand five hundred people playing that game. Ooh. So that would wow. indicate if Anthem's got less than that, that's probably not good. And that I mean, well. bleak. And they also note that like Fallout seventy six is like twenty one places above. <laughs> might come above above uh, Battlefield One, so it's like wow. that. That doesn't sound good at all. And I mean, they. I mean, this like when they they were talking about this on here, they were like saying like they checked like the different regions as well, and it's the same across like all regions. It's not just like America or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's not looking good. It's um yeah. It's, I mean, it's really I have good. always said that they're not going to kill Anthem. Like this is a clear big IP for EA. They're going to stick with it. They're working <laughs> it. They get the updates out. If I no one's playing it, that, Matt, what's the point? It's just, I've always said that, but now with like that many people, they've obviously delayed Cataclysm, which is like the big p- content drop, I believe. Mm, yeah. I, I do, I do. I mean, I wasn't really going to say this, but I do go into the Anthem subreddit a few times a week, <laughs> <laughs> and right. it is amazing. Everyone is sort of in on the joke, like everyone is like yeah. slaying it, and you, you get the impression it's not just like it's not pure trolling. It's actually like people who are sort of part of the joke, or they understand, or they're like, oh, you know, like we all got done. Like if like the the own people who like are in the subreddit on all the time making gags about it, it's just uh. But yeah, I guess it's like a is it is it, is it what's you know it's like it's not a siege mentality, but when everyone's like in on the joke just to like keep their keep spirits up and keep morale up, yeah, uh, it's quite funny going to the from subreddit. But yeah, I mean, less than two and a half thousand people. I mean, at what point do they say? I still don't it's think not. they will because I can't. Surely they can't just kill well, this. I think I think we'll know. When it comes to when it comes to E3, because if they don't, if they like, if EA at their conference come out and say, "Yeah, we've got all this content coming or other for Anthem," then that would indicate. But if they don't mention it or anything at all, or if they just say, I, I mean, yeah, "Yeah, we're fixing it," they will have to mention it. Imagine if they don't mention it. If they don't mention it, then it's gone, surely. But do you think like, they're going to mention it at uh, E3, James? I think they will. I think they'll mention it, and I think they'll say that they've got exciting content coming, but they won't say what it is. I think that's because I don't think they're going to want to jack in like just yet, but um, yeah, I think they'll they'll just mention it like that, but they won't say what they've got or anything yet. Wow, I mean, all the Fallout seventy six stuff that a lot of that was all obviously about like the um, uh, the like the collector's edition and the bags and stuff. But yeah, I have heard they've made loads of changes and they're constantly updating it and stuff. But uh, well, where's it's gone pretty quiet apparently. Uh, in terms of Anthem stuff. Like, actually, one of the funny things I saw on Reddit the other day, uh, some of our posts, like, um, the official Anthem Twitter account has not updated in four weeks. <laughs> like, that, they said, like, no clips, no information, no memes, no news. Four <laughs> weeks. No memes. I mean, if anyone like... doesn't tweet for four weeks, you assume that person's died. Uh. Um, <laughs> four weeks? Yeah. Shocking. I mean, if, you were, if, you, if you're part of the Anthem PR team, is this is like is this a nightmare scenario or is it like mate? I've just there's no point in me even doing anything. I should put my feet up for a bit until he actually makes some new stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm just looking at the list for the UK for like most play games on Xbox, and it's like, mm-hmm. I mean, Farming Simulator 19 is in like the top 50. And Farming Simulator does all right, man. I'm sure it apparently, does fine. Yeah, apparently, but... it is widely enjoyed by a lot of actual farmers. Okay. 
who That's, just uh, because they're like, oh, it's like farming, but I can just kind of do what I want. It's yeah. like a. <laughs> An amazing yeah, so, fantasy for him. But also, the last, Xbox 360, from the, the last tweet from Ant from the game was on 23rd of April. They've done a couple of retweets since then, but um, <laughs> they were, like, one of the retweets is about Ant from ma- uh, Maintenance saying, At hashtag Ant from Game, maintenance is complete. Thanks for sticking with us, freelancers. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that was over a month ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, even like, um, Xbox 360 Call of Duty is like in the top 50, you know, like compared wow. to this. So it's, uh, yeah. That's, yeah, so I don't know. I guess I think we'll see. We will know at E3 like what's going on with this and whether you know at that show whether they show anything. I still think they'll show something. Yeah, they'll just say we've got stuff. Imagine coming. if they just came out and they were like Anthem Two coming yeah. next year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe what the way I see it is okay. Maybe they say nothing because, and this is what I would do for them. I would basically. Learn from No Man's Sky that said they, you know, uh, Hello Games basically said stuff way too early, and they yep. got burned because they weren't delivering. And mm-hmm. so I think, like, I think, um, but it, what, what was it? What's his name? Something Murray? Sean Murray. Uh, Sean. Sean Murray. He said, but okay, we it's a cool name, very memorable. Yeah, well, I knew the surname. <laughs> he said, you know, like we're not gonna say stuff too early. We're gonna just wait till it's done and then announce it. Maybe, maybe the Anthem team have learned from that. That's why they say nothing for the last four weeks, and maybe they'll say, mm-hmm. look. We're ha- we're here to announce, you know, m- a massive, way bigger update than maybe we might have anticipated at this point. And that fixes everything, and they'll be like the bl- the you know the patch notes or the blog post will list like a thousand changes. They're like everything you've asked for. We have tried to fix. That's why we've been saying nothing. I mean, that's what I would do. That's the but only then, thing they yeah. can do. The thing point, is, surely. is like I'm just thinking like about like a sort of an equivalent kind of thing with this. It would be like Sea of Thieves, and like Rare did a much yeah. better job with this though, didn't they? Because they communicated. Like exactly what they were doing and like how they were going to improve it, and they did but loads see, of things. Yeah, like, we know never it's not great, like this, and then they just they were like, "This is the plan," yeah, this, and they stuck to it, even but though like, we took the piss out of it. Uh, see if they did get bad, though. <laughs> no, see if they <laughs> did get like mauled no, no. though, didn't it? When it came out, people were just yeah, like, but see if like, kind of they said the issue was like, oh, it's good, it's just not it's, there's not much content. Whereas Anthem is like, there's not much content and it's broken and it's. All sorts of things. Yeah, Anthem's problems so, ran a lot deeper. Like, oh, the game's yeah. good. It just needs more. You know, it needs more than we saw, and right now that's all it was. But at least it was a solid foundation to build. But it feels mm-hmm. like with Anthem, they are it, well. It appears they're sort of going back to a drawing board. So, but yeah, that, that's how I would do it. Not saying for ages. Here's like here's a ma- I mean a ridiculous update to basically try and to get hey everyone if you played Anthem, this isn't just like a patch update with a couple of nerfs and buffs that only the hardcore mm. really going to engage with. This is like a full a, a massive content drop. So if you've got Anthem still, like you know you should get involved, get playing it. I mean that, that's how I would. That's how, exactly how I would do it. That's the only way you can do it, surely. I still think the ship sailed, though. I don't think any. I don't think they can do anything about. We're still talking about Sea of Thieves, or we? No, we're talking about. <laughs> I, I mean, they can't let its IP die. So E3 is going to be interesting. I mm. know oh, EA love killing IP, so it's fine. Or oh, developers this is rather. definitely something you're going to lie to me about. I've just realised. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because it's such an absurd situation, you can say any old shit, and I can't really argue. <laughs> nope. So, yeah, is that okay. is that that's that's the news? That is the news. That's it. Yeah. Tremendous. What have we been playing? Well, we've all been playing one thing that is the same. Yeah. Um. So, should we talk about everybody's golf VR? Go on, then. let's do that. I mean, I know, Matt, you obviously you played it like a fair bit last week, hadn't you? Yeah, played a fair um, bit last week. Uh, and, yeah. I, and I mean, we've had such a busy week in, in uh, over last week with like streams and all sorts of recording. That this is the only thing I have actually got a chance to play, and that was for one evening. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm happy to say I've met a new caddy, uh, and, and, <laughs> and, and, we're, and we're, we're, yeah, it's fine. I'm still, we've still had some moments um, mm-hmm. in is between this, around. Is the yep. caddy, is this new one, is it male or female, Matt? It's female. Okay. I think, okay. I think she's called Katie, but uh, I can't remember. Is this the one you have to pay money for in the... No, no, I, no, I own Katie. <laughs> I own okay. Katie Fair and Square. Don't think so, Fair actually. But, anyway, yeah, um, and and it's fine so far. I mean, we've, we've had some moments, again, uh, you know, uh, in between the rounds. Um, we're suddenly on like, a boardwalk via beach. And she's like, oh, I love this music from Everybody's Golf. Uh, you should <laughs> listen to this. And she takes out one of her, like, Bluetooth earbuds and, like... Um, and 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 basically you listen to it, um, and you listen to the music, and but it, it's like it's really like poorly done. Unlike, but basically when I saw her there and she had like he- he- headphones in or yeah earbuds in on the music, mm-hmm. I instinctively like lean forward because I think if this is Astro Bot or another game that really has like utilised 
all these elements of VR and 3D. What what I expect to happen now is if I get closer to her, I can like hear it louder. And also when she had like, and then when she said, oh, you should listen to this. And she had the earbud in one hand. And mm. I was like, okay, sure, if I lean now, but no. And then when she was like, okay, no, you listen to it. And she put like her hand and earbud next to me and it sort of faded to black. And then the music was loud. I was like, it's a really poor implementation. It could have been way cleverer than that. But so Matt, when, you, when you leaned in, were you, were you nervous? Was your heart beating? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't so bad that time. Maybe I got used to the weirdness. <laughs> anyway, and now I did the thing, yeah, where we're looking at the sunset. And I was like, I'm trying to play golf, but whatever. Um, but no, I'm still loving the game. It, um, I, although I will say, I'm, I'm sort of feeling a little bit. Okay, this is maybe the, a weird choice of words to use given what we were speaking about. But I do feel a little bit lonely out there because I it, know what you mean. It's just, it's just you and and the caddy. But it's just like yeah. I wish there was more of a sense of you battle, you know uh, playing golf against other players there's a scoreboard yeah. right at the end mm-hmm. and you can press a couple of buttons I think if you look at the tablet you can see the score but mm-hmm. yeah like once again this is a, it's, this is a, this is a first VR experience so what this is an experience where I feel like this is like the start of something good and maybe like if there was like a a new EA uh, like a Tiger Woods game or a McElroy golf game seeing like the official sort of like um like like commentators and them saying oh someone's dropped a bogey on the 17th and I want to have like a bit of excitement about me playing golf against other people whereas right now I basically mm. feel like I'm playing golf on my own and then the scores at the end and then then you're back out on your own again. It feels like quite a lonely experience, which is quite sad, really. It's strange, isn't it? Because the the actual golf is basically perfect. Yeah, it's great. As far as, far as yeah, I absolutely. can tell, um, it's absolutely tremendous. It's yeah, but it and it's clear that that's where all the effort has gone. And you like you do wonder, like you know, for all the joking about the the caddies being a bit creepy and over familiar and stuff, you do wonder if they identified that that loneliness was a thing, and they were like, well, how do we fix it? Let's put yeah. your best mate in it. Yeah, um, which doesn't work. Um, where you're, where you're because, suddenly eating chocolates in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I, I find that's like it's it's almost worse than just being on your own because it feels like you're trapped in the middle of nowhere with someone who's basically a stranger and you don't really like them. Um, but it's not enough to stop me playing it. Like I, I'm oh, no, enjoying it not, a no. lot. Um, it's absolutely tremendous. It was really interesting. I had a, a session. Um, so my wife used to actually play golf quite a lot. Oh right, um, and was like pretty good at it. Um, so I made her have a go just to get a handle on like how realistic it is, with mixed results. Like she, <laughs> she wasn't too great at it. She needed like quite a lot because you know you don't actually do like a proper full golf swing. You can pretty much just like just flick yeah, it. Yeah, and, you, and if you, if you can really do. But to. when I do, I'm way worse. I'm just like exactly. Like, if, yeah, like there's like a bit of a swing, but it's not like a properly over your shoulder and then swing back with like yeah, you know, if you do that, golf it's swing. It's much more likely to just go off in a mad direction. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so and obviously, like, yeah. yeah, and obviously you don't have the you know the weight of the the club or anything, so it obviously it feels different. However, what was interesting um, is that in real life, she always had a really bad hook. And she did in the game as well. Every time she was whacking it, and she was hooking it really badly to the right, and she was like, "Yeah, that checks out. That's <laughs> that is yeah, what I, she's I, like." I've been really golf. bad hooking this as well. So now, when I start okay. like you know from the tee off, whatever, I'm I'm moving. I mm. also when you play other shots during the uh, during the round, but I'm moving my mm. um, the aim far to the right because I know I right. mostly yeah. hook it round to the left. So okay. I'm trying to like you know. Um, That's actually slicing it, Matt. Not hooking oh, I'm it. sorry. So I'm so, God, it would be like, I got, come on, Luke, that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible swing. I got Chen to have a go, and she just she couldn't hit the ball. She just really? couldn't. Yeah, she just couldn't hit it. And uh, yeah, she just got angry and just took it off. Just like, that's that's rubbish. Again, it, it was a shame, because you know, we, we've talked about yeah lack of, of multiplayer and stuff. So what basically all we did was we just put it on like, um, yeah, just three whole random, um, and then just take it in turns. But obviously we're lucky in that we're more or less the same height. Like if there was... A few inches between you, you'd be have to like you'd have to sort of go in and out of the settings every time you switched yeah. over, which would be a pain in the ass. Um, so it's it's not even built for like I don't know what the term is like hot seat play. No, um, not at all. So that's again a missed opportunity, I guess. But um, maybe most people wouldn't want to like you know swap the headset around all the time. Well, um, this is the thing that I feel a little bit disappointed with it is that it does seem quite limited in like the amount of stuff that you can actually do with it. Like, there's not. Yeah. It doesn't have tournaments, does it? Really? Does it have tournaments? 
Well, um, it feels like it's just you going along on the course and there's a score at the end, but there's yeah. no sense of a tournament feel at all. That's yeah. not yeah. you, later, I don't know. Because when you set it to like nine holes, I haven't done it, I haven't unlocked 18 yet. No, but I mean, it does make know. a point of saying, oh, you're entering a tournament by doing this. And then mm. you just do, you just play and then it's like, oh, you won. And I, I'm not really clear who I'm being measured against. I, I, or... I think about like the online scores at the end because it's all like, oh... Look at your your online score. I was like, uh, how where where do, on this board does it say my online score or yeah. how I've done? <laughs> it shows yeah. my score on the course that I've done previously, but yeah, it's yeah. So I don't really understand what's happening there. Um, but yeah. it's also a shame there's no multiplayer either because that would be oh yeah, yeah fantastic. Like if you could do that. And I've said this before, I don't even fully expect or need like fully 3D avatars of my friends. Just like. Just, I don't know. Like, if you're on the course uh, at the same time, it'd yeah, be fine. But yeah, a dot, be... or I don't care, it's like something floating. Like, just, I want to, you know, like, me and you play, we take turns. I don't expect to see your avatar running around and doing crazy VR stuff, although that would be awesome as well. But yeah, lack of multiplayer mm. is a real shame. But yeah, this just yep. made me want, like, an EA, EA Sports golf game with all the official licensing and the official sort of golf graphics and the courses and the commentary and, you yeah. know, it, it, and just with a real feel of a tournament that you're battling against other people because there's nothing well, this, in this is game. it yeah it's like it's 25 quid and for 25 quid i'm very happy with what it is but if they charged me 40 45 and put in some multiplayer yeah that'd be I, that'd that be okay would have been that. worth it i yeah. think um it's yes yeah, so it's just a shame that they've sort of like okay they've they've done the right thing by only charging 25 quid for it because it is like once you know once you like okay this is an amazing game of golf what else is there not a lot. <laughs> so you're like, okay, well, 25 quid's probably about right, but I sort of wish they had just gone the extra mile and charged full price for it, if that's, you know, if that was an option. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I, yeah, definitely. Um, but I mean, yeah, I no, I, I am enjoying it loads. Yeah, like, I mean, it's, it's so still nice an to play. amazingly fun golf game. It's just, it's so, so good. Yeah, yeah and I, it's just I, so nice to play a golf game where, like, getting par is, like, feels really good. <laughs> Cause, you oh, know, yeah. Like, because most golf games, you, like... Because you're not, you know, you're not really playing golf. You just, pre- you know, there's like a marker moving around, and you press once for power and another once for accuracy. Not much, like you know, correlation there between that and actually playing golf. So you know, it's like most golf games, it's kind of assumed like unless you're getting like you know birdies every time or eagles or whatever, it's like you're kind of shit unless you're like overperforming constantly. Whereas this is like, mate, if you get par, that's amazing because golf is quite hard. <laughs> And this is a lot closer to actual golf than than we've seen before, so yeah, it's it's top. Really love it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean the caddies. It is yeah, just just. <laughs> I don't know why you you're so scared of them. You just don't understand why <laughs> no, you're so it's scared. Not scared of them. Right? Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, way, the way it seems like it's it's like they're being. Okay, I don't know, maybe I'll cut this, but it it's like it's like they're strippers. Oh God. Okay, go on. Matt, they're not real. They're not <laughs> real. No, no, but in, in the way that, you know, I, I've been on a strip, a, a strip club every now and then, and, uh, like, you know, obviously they're paid, you know, to, like, talk to you and make you feel nice and stuff, so you'll do a dance. This feels exactly the same way. And I'm like, it, it does this not make you uncomfortable in the slightest bit, James? No, because I know they're not real. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I, well, I get that. It's just all smiling in the... You know. I know that by, like, you know... Walking around with a fake caddy, I'm not cheating on my wife. It's fine. It wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, James, you can't talk because you have not known any of the weird stuff. You've just done a one balancing on a beam thing, which yeah, isn't mate. weird. You haven't we seen also... what we've seen. Yeah, you haven't seen chocolates in a golf caddy. Yeah. No, you're not, not in a golf caddy, in a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <laughs> only anyway, It's still amazing, but yeah, I wish, I wish there was more of a feel of a tournament. And also, I, get, I sort of get the feeling that. Like, this isn't a game that's going to get updates. <laughs> I know what you mean. This is like, one and done, there you go. I'm not like, oh, maybe they'll patch in this. this. Maybe they'll patch in, I don't know, more yeah. play or I, I get the impression it's probably not going to be the yeah, case. They're not, yeah, they're not just going to add that stuff, are they? That's going to be everybody's golf VR too. Which, yeah. you know, I'm there day one. Definitely. That. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they definitely got the golf right. And that's the yep. main thing. It's uh, Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, but but I mean, we've had this loads of other times, but this feels like a great sort of starting point for a golf game. Like other golf games can come and say, look, this is how you do golf. And if other games bring in the tournament feel and feel of actually playing golf, uh, play, you know, a tournament and competitiveness mm-hmm. and multiplayer, then yeah, it'll be brilliant. Yeah, totally. Absolutely brilliant. 
Yeah, that's, um, that's all I've been playing, sadly, because we've, so, we've been so busy busy this week. No, fair dues. Um, I've only got one more. Um, I originally bought Shovel Knight on the 3DS, and I thought it was fine, but I didn't really get why everyone thinks it's incredible. Um, I've, I mean, I've said before, I've got no real nostalgia for the, you know, the NES sort of 8-bit um, look or sound or aesthetic, I should have just said. Um, and I, it was all right, and I got maybe halfway through, and I was like, yeah, yeah whatever. Um, it was on sale. It was in that, that big uh, Switch sale, um, and it was like a tenner for the, the Shovel Knight treasure trove, so that's basically Shovel Knight and all the DLC, which is like an extra th- two, three campaigns. Um, it's fucking brilliant. Like, I don't know what was wrong with me. Um, when I first, I don't know if it's a different format or or whatever. But there's no, uh, there was nothing wrong with the 3DS version, as far as I could tell. That you know, the the sort of layered 3D stuff was actually quite nice. Um, so I missed that. Um, but yeah, I I don't know what my problem was. Like I'm playing it now, and it, it's like easily like one of the best platformers I've ever played. <laughs> oh, really? I, either of you, either of you played it? No, I've obviously seen it, and uh, you know, I, I knew people talked about it in yeah. high regard, but I never mm-hmm. never played it. See, I'm. James, I'm oh, it's God. in my wish list um, okay. on the Switch, and I didn't. I know it was reduced, but I didn't buy it because it's just I've bought too much stuff like over the last yeah. couple of months, and I was just <laughs> no, like, no, I need to. Fair enough. I need to um, play some of these things like before I buy yeah. anything new. And uh, yeah, so I, yeah, I didn't get it. No, no, that's fair enough. I do think you would really like it, though. Um, I mean, the worst part is like I don't. There's no lesson in this. I don't know what's changed. I'm not like. <laughs> I'm not thinking. Oh well, actually, yeah, I've I've got a better appreciation of this, that, and the other, or actually a certain thing that's that's clicked or whatever. I don't know. Other than I'm just like playing it now. I'm just like, what the hell was wrong with me? This is clearly great. Um, for those who aren't aware, for whatever reasons, but the game's been around long enough now. But yeah, so it's a two D platformer in the style of a NES game, um, but obviously with sort of modern twists on it. Um, and yeah, so you're this shovel knight. You're a knight who uses a shovel as a weapon. Ha ha, very funny. Um, and it's yeah, it's a, it's sort of it's like it's a bit Mega Man and it's a bit Mario Three in that you sort of you you know you're wandering, you're going around a world map with all different points on it. Sometimes there's enemies roaming around and you sort of you know bump into them on the map and you have to fight them before you progress. Um, Mario Brothers Three style. But then each level is like. Um, it's another night and each level is like totally themed around each one um and it's like really nicely done and um yeah and it's basically just going through the levels beating them getting treasure buying stuff buying up like upgrades and and you you get these like sub weapons all sort of do different things um and it's it's fucking great it's just so much fun um I'm just the watching soundtrack the trailer now. Was like, like, did yeah. this? I, I, yeah, I never actually ever looked at it. I, I thought I knew what it was about, but actually, mm-hmm. it's way more of a NES game than I thought. In my mind, it was more of a Celeste, where it looks like a modern reimagining yeah. of like a one of those old old style games. But no, it really does look like an old. Yeah, they've properly stuck NES to like the limited mega, color mega palette and Mars system game. Yeah, yeah, and it's the same with the like the soundtrack. Like, it's not just chip tune. It's like, oh no, this. This is like really sort of stripped back, and but again, uh, you know, when I first played it, it's like yeah, soundtrack, ah, oh, whatever, not really fussed. No, there's some absolute bangers on the soundtrack. Yeah. It's proper good, um, and uh, yeah, and I'm, I've, I think I've nearly finished the the Shovel Knight campaign, and I'm really excited about getting onto the DLC because apparently it's all ace. It's like it's all um, set before the main campaign, and it's like the other knights um, that you fight. Um, as Shovel Knight, it's some basically some of the campaigns are like framed around them before they went evil. Um, and apparently, yeah, they're just just proper good. So, yeah, uh, it turns out as everyone tried to tell me, uh, Shovel Knight is fucking amazing. Remind me next time we get a question about, oh, are there any games you didn't enjoy at first and then you you were really late uh, enjoying yeah. them? This that remind me that this is one of them because I will forget. On it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, proper good. And it was I say it was a tenner. Um, which is amazing. I, I assume it's back up to full price now. But oh, nice. Yeah. Is that what you've been playing this week? Yeah, that's been. I it. know we've been busy, mm-hmm. but did you did you get a chance to start or look at Dauntless? Or I literally like five minutes on it. Um, okay. The servers have been fucked. Um, yeah, I've heard it's lots been, of things like that. <laughs> it's been so busy. Like I, I launched it and it was like you're like number two thousand in the queue. I was like, eh. um, so I literally like did the tutorial. Um, I met. I, 
initially I didn't like the feel of it, but obviously that sort of monster hunter mentality is so ingrained in me that I'm like do like you know do I not like it or is that just my brain going oh, this isn't quite the same as monster hunter so I'm probably being unfair um I I'm, I was a bit put off I know people I know have been playing it and they were sort of saying oh there are you know because it's free to play which is fine we all know free to play can be done well these days um but there are things where like there's timers and you can pay to ignore them um and apparently it is like a relatively optional thing um like in terms of i forget what it what exactly it governs but it's it's yeah it's something you won't necessarily do a lot but it is there and like when you go to the there's like a village and like all the sort of real money vendors are like in front of you and the other stuff's like behind them so things like that feel a little bit cynical but i'll no i'll I'll give it a proper go and hopefully report back next week oh awesome um, but yeah uh, but that's it for me, James, you got you got more, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a bunch of things I played this week. Um, yeah. I finished The Messenger because um, oh, yeah. I got through to that, and I mean, I don't have a lot to add beyond it being excellent. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, it really is, it's more than tribute to earlier games. It's like it does feel like really unique by the end and excellent. Mm-hmm. Like I really, I mean, I wouldn't go into it probably straight after you've done uh, Shovel Knight, but I still would recommend you play it, Sean. Because I think yeah. I think yeah, you yeah, like no, it. I'm, I'm so. really looking forward to it. I did think when I was buying Shovel Knight, I was like, I really should just play the Messenger instead. But it was on sale, and I'm an yeah. idiot. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it is very good. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I I didn't feel I still don't feel the need to go back because there are like collectibles and stuff. And I was like, I, I I don't really feel the need to do that. I feel like I've got enough out of this now um, to finish yeah. it. But I mean, one mm-hmm. of the things that I liked about it the most was, you know, like with with so many games these days, I feel like. There's this, there is this always this move to make things difficult, like a lot of the time. Mm. You know, to things have to be hard. You've got to like they make you work for stuff. And I mean, Katana Zero was a bit like that. Like there was bits that were really quite tricky mm. that you just had to like keep repeating until you got it, and that's fine. Yeah. But I really like this because it was like it wasn't like that at all. It's really forgiving. The like boss battles that you do, they look great, but you can. I mean, most of them I can beat like after maybe two or three attempts, and then I was mm-hmm. like, and I felt. I felt like it was a challenge enough, do you know what I mean, to like, you know, to sort of get through. Yeah. And so I was really happy with it. And also very good checkpointing as well, which also reduced like frustration and irritation. I mean, there's there's so many bits towards the end where it starts to feel a lot like Celeste as well, in terms yeah. of like movement, where you've got to like sort of nail stuff, but it's still more oh, forgiving really? than Celeste. Yeah. It, I mean more forgiving, but it's still and also the combat is always um you know, it, it's simple but still stylish and, and fun. So I still would heartily recommend it. I think it's it's really one of my favourite games on the Switch that I've played so far. Cool. It's um yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Um the other thing, I mean I've played everybody's golf as we talked about and I've been playing Days Gone um quite a lot this week. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I couldn't bring myself to play this uh for a while because I started it uh maybe about a week ago and I kept on putting off going back to it. And by you know like by doing stuff like okay I've got a you know I've got a bit of free time now I'll just play a couple of games of FIFA and then I'll play Days Gone. And then it's like, oh, I'm just going to keep playing more FIFA because I don't really want to play Days Gone. You know, I really then- should do that DIY, I promise, Chen. Yeah, you know, I will repaint the, the you know, I'll decorate. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I don't want to play Days Gone. Yeah, it's, 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 it was a bit like that. But then on Thursday night, I think it was, because, um, yeah, because that's when we had a night off. And I just thought, <laughs> okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, sit down and I'm going to actually play this and just sort of and what was really weird about that is that I did that and then it was one o'clock in the morning and I'd sat there for a long time playing it like probably about three or four hours I just played it straight and it's see objectively it's not a great game at all and there (laughs) there are a bunch of problems with it like there really are I mean I'm gonna I mean I've got here I've got I wrote down a couple of things I mean like the story is is dreadful it really is pretty dreadful. And the funny thing about that, I mean, I find myself like looking at my phone, like whenever a cutscene starts, and that's pretty often. So I spend a lot of time just like reading websites and stuff. Because uh, you see, normally I'm the kind of person that always likes to try and get into story and games. No matter how bad they are, I try and give them a chance and try and sort of, you know, like engage with it because I feel often, you know, it helps with the atmosphere and everything. But in this case, it's just boring. The story is just really boring. Yeah, but this it's... is a big old game. I mean, I, I, maybe if it's like a short but not so great game, I'm like, well, it doesn't matter because the whole thing will be over in eight to ten hours. But this is like yeah. potentially up to like 50, 60 hours. Like, I don't want to be like 20 hours or 30 hours in and then saying I literally haven't the faintest idea. 
Or maybe no, no, actually, it's, it's, the story the is so simplistic. You'll get it after one cut anyway. So well, you do, yeah, because it's not complicated at all. Like that. That's and that's the problem with the story because it, it's not complicated. You can see it's obvious what's going to happen all the time. The dialogue is fine, but it's not anything like interesting really. It's. I mean, there was a bit in the game where I mean, I, I was text you about this, Matt, because I, I started laughing like at one point because <laughs> there's this bit. I mean, I'm going to spoil this because it's in like the opening cutscene stuff anyway, whereby like the like Deacon or Deke as he's often called, which I hate. <laughs> Deke. It's yeah, Deke. I just hate that. I, I mean, he's got a terrible name, but I just hate it when they shorten that. It just sounds terrible. But his his wife, like you know, like dies in well, it's apparently dies in like a helicopter crash, and like. He keeps going. You keep going to the crash site, and there's like a rock there, and it seems and like you're supposed to go there and like sort of talk to the you know your dead wife, you know, to sort of like get talk through your problems. But on the stone, he scratched her name, so it just says like Sarah, but it looks like a five year old scratched it. It looks ridiculous. It looks really really funny. And as soon as I saw that, I just couldn't stop laughing because it just looks really, really terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's meant to be really emotional, and you see that yeah. it's like oh okay. But it's like who who wrote that? Like it just looks. But it also, looks I mean, terrible. I I I couldn't perfectly engrave someone's name if I had to. But it yeah, you're right, bother. It you know, it's like if if you can't do it, if it's going to look like that. Just don't do it. It just just looks <laughs> just looks terrible. So that was bad. And I mean, so the story stuff isn't great, and it's not really engaging. And I mean, I wouldn't say yeah, I would say I wouldn't say it's that's the thing. I wouldn't say it's terrible. It's just so generic and so sort of bland and the characters I've I've met one character recently that is a little bit more interesting but in generally they in general they're not you know they're not terribly engaging and I mean aside from that the missions are also pretty repetitive and there's not really much incentive to explore the map even though it is like quite big and the reason for this is because of the way that like the story and the side missions are presented to you because you know in, in stuff like GTA and like Red Dead and you know other uh, games like that you kind of explore the map and you sort of pick up side missions as you go along and sort of find stuff you know as things are happening and things like that it's not this isn't like that because it feels like um like Ben Studios that made this they wanted everyone to play every mission in this so even though something comes up as like a side mission you kind of have to do it to you know to progress the main story as well because they all like link in together so nothing feels optional and it ends up feeling super linear because you're basically just looking at your like log of what you've got to do next and you just have you've got to clear that to get through to the next sort of like areas and stuff so although you probably could like you know skip some stuff if you wanted to it really encourages you to to make sure that you do like everything that's like story based in the game and that's what's we're, that's a bit disappointing. I I don't like that so much. I you know if it's an open world game, I'd at least like to have more sort of um, freedom to ignore stuff if I want to. Yeah, the only mm. stuff I ignore is those question marks that appear on the the map. Yeah, those are that's all like the stranger things from uh, the, not uh, the stranger missions from Red Dead. That that sort of stuff. Yeah, and those that's and that's also an interesting thing because those those like question marks they appear like just like in Red Dead, and sometimes they can be things like okay, there's somebody being like attacked and they're being there's held up or whatever, yeah. and yeah, you've got to like help them. But also, there's sometimes indicators of like a side mission like area that's like something you've got to clear later. So you can end up like going there, like doing it, and then later on you still have to go back there to like do something because it's part of the main story. It's it's very strange. Like the structurally, it's it's really odd. But for some reason, I still am really enjoying playing it. I mean, I've played it on like Friday, like the whole most of the weekend. I played it for like quite long periods of time in the evening, like when I when I had time. And I think it's mostly because I really love riding the bike around and like upgrading it. And now I've got you know it's like it goes a lot faster, and you've got like nitro and stuff like that. And it's really nice to drive like to ride that bike uh particularly because of all the environmental effects as well i mean i've just got to this stage where it's like it started snowing as well but it's not like um it's not like a seasonal thing though it doesn't seem to be anyway because it can snow like one day and then the next day it will not be snow it's a bit like being in the uk you know it's like you can sometimes suddenly get like a mad flurry of it and then it's it's like gone but it really like affects the environment in a big way like when you're like you know your bike really slides around i mean i went out on this mission in the evening once and it was amazing because it was like just fog 
but then also like driving snow as well. And like the snow was beginning to settle on the ground, and it just looked fantastic. And yeah, just the weather riding... in this game was really, really good. Really yeah, it, it's it's the best. I it, honestly, it's the best like environmental stuff I think I've ever seen in a game. I, mean, I said that last mm-hmm. week, but I really believe that now. I mean, I think it's it's really great and that's the thing with the bike is that you know you're like sliding around in the mud and stuff and it just it feels good and also i love the killing as well to be honest i mean this, <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> i love the killing no because the comp the combat is really good it has it has it has better than red dead 2 like combat like definitely like it's it's much more intuitive to like the way it's done and Often you have to do stuff like you have to clear out camps and everything, and it is really repetitive because they're all pretty much the same. The AI is a bit stupid, but it's still fun trying to figure out how to do it. Like it's still fun, like thinking, okay, am I gonna like you know stealth this or am I just gonna like try and like you know take them out from a distance or whatever? And then the best thing about it though is using the like the freakers, like the the zombies to your advantage, whereby I've some camps I have cleared out by attracting like a large group of like zombies or whatever, and then getting them to follow me driving into the camp, and then they end up going in there and just wasting everyone. And it's fantastic because then you just like drive in, like herd them in there. They you hear all the gunfire and the screaming and everything. You just drive out, and then it's like mission complete. And you're like that. That was great. I enjoyed that. That was it. Was like uh, yeah, it's, it's it's awesome if you like really lead around to other enemies. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. As in other human characters. Yeah. yeah. But there's also, I mean, and the herds as well, which they the, the turn hordes. up. Yeah, I mean, they, I think they call them hordes or herds. I can't remember. Yeah, hordes, yeah. Is it? I don't remember. But either way, I mean, they turn up like in much larger numbers like later. And that's when you start to see the stuff that they had in the early trailers and everything, where there are like hundreds of them. And it looks, it does look, I mean, they're genuinely scary, honestly. Like when you see like a huge group like that, and you're just thinking, "There's no way, there's I can't take on these." There's, you know, I've, I'm not in any way equipped to do this, and you end up just running away. I mean, I, I the other day I was riding my bike, turned around a corner, and then there was a massive like horde of them like crossing a road together, and I was just like, "Nope!" Like this, I just like turned around and just drove <laughs> off as fast as I could because you know one of them saw me or whatever. But it's still. There is that sort of sense of like threat from it, which I wasn't expecting at all. Because when you come across them like individually, they're nothing; they're really easy. But when there's loads of them, they are genuinely quite sort of um, quite scary. Yeah, so and they're quite fast actually, aren't they? I, I think I said on last week's show oh, I saw a horde, but um, and, and it was easily the largest group of enemies I'd seen. But uh, a couple of days after that, I was watching a Twitch stream where I saw a proper horde, and no, I had not. I, I have still not seen a proper horde in the way that like some of the end game stuff is. It's, it's absolutely insane. So yeah. I saw a massive group last week when I thought I saw one. I, I didn't. It, that, that, that was not. That, that, that's not as big as they can get. See, and what what I'm intrigued about is I've read online like people like saying that you can like take those on at some point like towards the end. And I'm just thinking, how? Like I just yeah, don't yeah, know. Because if you to finish a game, you basically <laughs> have to take out a certain number of hordes. So yeah, yeah I, I'm a bit scared stuff. about the idea of doing that because it's just they are, you know, they're and it's just. I mean, this is just such a weird game because it's not a great game, but I just can't stop playing it for some reason, and it's also <laughs> ridiculously long as well. Like you look at, I've, I mean, I had a look online at the like, where I'm at, and I mean, I'm, I'm only probably about. Uh, maybe just over halfway through, I think. But I feel like I've been playing it for a very long time. And part of that is because of the repetitive nature of the missions. But And I'm sure that that... I mean, there's a couple of mission types that I really... I do dislike, which are like sort of these sort of stealth sections where you have to like follow people and like listen into conversations. And they're oh, irritating. Yeah, yeah those are stupid. They're, they're really irritating. But then others are, are really good. So, I don't know. It, I, I it's This is the kind of game it, it's difficult to sort of like recommend at all because I... It's not great, but I am enjoying it. I'm t- I'm having a good time with it. So that's that. Yeah, and, I'm, re- I'm really eager to get more uh, to play more of it because I I have enjoyed even with all the things you've said. And I I agree with all of it. I, I've I've still just enjoyed just going in there and and playing it, even though it's quite simplistic. So this week I'm gonna have way more f- uh, free time, hopefully. So I'm e- eager to get back to it because I think yeah. you've overtaken me, haven't you? I think you think you've, you've managed to hammer it way more in a week than I have in like two or three. So I need to get back on it. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's, yes, because I was just playing it like repeatedly and just like yeah, just <laughs> playing for like long periods of time at night. And um, yeah, it was. It's just yeah. I don't know. It's it's good. I mean, the only other thing I've done this week is I have tried PlayStation Now. Um, oh yeah. Because you know, I mean, somebody said the other week you should give it a go and everything, and I thought, well, I've still got that week's trial, and I thought maybe on Sunday I'll give it a go, and 
it's garbage. Um, that's, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the problem with it is right. garbage, man. <laughs> it's not. It's it, it's not very good. And the reason for this is, I mean, I played like for a long time. I've always thought, why don't Sony bundle this with like like PlayStation Plus or whatever, and you know, like mm. make it like a, a better value add sort of thing. But I think I know why now, and it's because it's not very good. And I think <laughs> it's not even worth having, yeah. Well, no, I think it probably would be even worse if you had a lot of people playing it as well, like that. Pro- <laughs> you know, so if you open that up to like the entire PlayStation Plus like subscriber base, it would probably mm-hmm. be like it would be terrible, most certainly. But I mean, the PlayStation Four games and the PS Two games you can download, and so that's good. Right. And if they if you download those games, it's just like having a regular regular game of it. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. all it's exactly the same as just downloading it from the store. So that's good. Yeah. But it's when it comes to streaming stuff, it's not great. And because I tried streaming some like PS3 games because you can't download those, obviously. And that's also a generation because I never owned a PS3. And so there's a whole bunch of games on there. I thought oh, I'll just have a look and see see what they're like. So. I tried the first game I tried was Everybody's Tennis because I thought I want to try something maybe if there's a lag problem this will be very apparent in this sort mm-hmm. of game. And yeah. and it was fine though. It was okay. And I think that's because this it, this is the other thing that's odd because that was this was a PS2 game like Everybody's Tennis and it didn't seem to have any trouble. It loaded pretty quickly and yeah, I didn't sense I mean there was a a tiny sense of like input lag but it wasn't too bad but then I started trying some PS3 games and that's when it went really downhill the first one I tried was Killzone 3 um because I thought okay I want to try something which you know for the time was kind of graphically intensive and also yeah, yeah. you know that kind of thing and that was dreadful like absolutely <laughs> dreadful. James what 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 speed internet have you got is it an internet well what, what, uh, what what's your speed I internet I get about I get about 40 down and okay. about 10 no, about fifteen up. So oh, it's, right. yeah, it's, yeah, it's then. yeah, so it's yeah, ab- <laughs> easy enough. It's absolutely good enough, yeah, to like to like do it. And so I tried so Killzone three, like all the cutscenes and all that kind of thing. That they played fine mostly. That was okay. But then when it came to actually control the game, that's when it became more of a problem because there was really noticeable like input lag, like to the point where like just moving the sticks, there was like a like very obvious delay on moving the sticks. And to the point where like, you know, you move the stick and it would go too far in one direction because obviously it hasn't like registered your input properly. And it because at the beginning of the game you do like a shooting gallery and it's like not possible. Like it's it was it, it could probably is possible, but it was just not fun. Like there's no way you'd want to play the game this way. It's really yeah. awful. Then I tried uh, Mortal Kombat ten because I just thought, okay, I'm gonna try like a <laughs> uh, you know a fighting game so but this was like ps4 like version this yeah, was yeah. better actually than killzone okay. it this ran a lot better than killzone it was i mean again bit of input lag but not not that great but i was still- gonna say i mean being a fighting game i assume if you were actually playing against other people and taking it seriously then it'd probably be awful yeah yeah it's, yeah but yeah that's uh, that, that was the yeah, that's what I kind of thought about it but then and then I tried Sonic Generations you know that one that came out <laughs> on PS3 like because I just wanted yeah. I thought okay this this should be simple this is just like platformer you know, this kind of thing and that had the worst lag of the lot it was it was really? unbelievable yeah it was like you press the button and it was literally like a second until like before Sonic jumped you know it was there wow. was a really big like sort of lag on that and also I tried Alex Kid because I just thought, okay, try something like really <laughs> retro. And that also had like a tiny bit of lag. And it was, all of this was, for some of these games, it was like, okay, maybe if I'd never played these games like offline before, you know, you'd think, ah, oh, maybe it's okay. Like everybody's tennis was fine, you know, Mortal Kombat, Alex Kid, that kind of thing. But stuff like Killzone, you're just thinking, I'd never want to play a game this way. And and it because it's it it's just unplayable. Like it it really was completely unplayable. And this is why. So I th- mm-hmm. just to be clear, so it wasn't necessarily the nature of the the game in question. It was that it was just that some games actually experienced a lot like much worse lag yeah. than others. And that's How what weird. I found really strange because I yeah. just thought surely it shouldn't be any different. Like why yeah. should it be that a PS2 game seems to work better than a PS3 one? Surely yeah. it's the same technology. Like, what yeah. what difference does it make? I mean, maybe someone can explain because I have no idea. But it really did seem that way. And so, I mean, I've got it for another week, so maybe I'll try. I'll try and see what it's like. But mm. I mean, it's funny because when you look at the store, like what they've got, there's quite a lot of good content on there. I mean, it, the the difference between this and Game Pass is it has all of the same sort of stuff as Game Pass. That's like the older stuff, you know, like from like a year, two, three years old or whatever. But mm-hmm. it, obviously, it's missing new releases. Like it doesn't have like anything new from Sony on there. But I guess for Sony, there's 
zero incentive to do that, is there? Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> if people are already, like, paying, like, 40 or 50 quid a pop for, like, stuff like Days Gone, like idiots like me or whatever, then why would they want to put it on a service like this when they're already making, like, tons of money from that? It's, um, yeah, yeah it makes no sense. But, the, I mean, I was talking to David about this, and he's right about one thing, which is that although this does have backwards compatibility, which is one of the big, like, sort of, plus points of Game Pass is you've got all those like Xbox 360 games and everything. Yeah. But you can download those and they'll play fine. This yep. also has backwards compatibility, but because it's the PS3, it's not worth it because they're just not playable. Like they just they just don't work. Like, you know, in the way that they really should do. Mm. And so, I mean I can really see why they haven't they because you know they don't really seem to super promote this at all. Like it's oh, no, not never, at all. <laughs> and I'm sure yeah. that it's because they know that it's not that good. Like and it's and it's like it's mm. a bit embarrassing, really. You know the you know, the way it's and I mean maybe this is going to improve after they switch everything over to like Azure or whatever. You know with the Microsoft stuff because yeah. at the moment it's um yeah you're just thinking yeah it's absolutely not worth the money if you want to stream like PS3 games. Mm. But then if you want to play. Some PS4 ones, it's it's good. I mean, for that, it's absolutely fine. You know, being able but, to but download also, stuff. If you, if you want to download rather than stream, then it's fine anyway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, then it's then it's exactly the same as like using just using the store. So it's, in terms um, of yeah. the library, so I, 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 did, did you say how big you thought the library was compared to Xbox? Uh, there's Game about, Pass? I, as I recall, there's about 500 games on there. Um, okay, so decent yeah. amount. Yeah, it's. I mean, there's a lot on there, and it's like there's a lot of stuff whereby if the PS4 was the only console I had. And I had kids or whatever. It would probably be worth having this because there's loads of like they've got like all the Lego games on there. They've got like all of the like loads of like sort of family stuff and everything you can play as well. So it would probably be mm-hmm. worth it, you know, for that kind yeah. of stuff. But as it stands, as we've already got like so many games to play and there's so much choice, it just doesn't feel. I I can't see why I'd want to keep this unless unless this had like um, new releases on it, like Game Pass does. Then it would be. Like completely worth having, but as it stands, I I don't think it is. And you see, I was thinking about using this to because I never played like Metal Gear Solid Four, and it is one I've always been sort of curious to play. And I always thought, oh, maybe I can play it through this. Probably I won't because I don't think it's going to be playable. <laughs> it's, but, but, um, but Metal Gear Four was in, um, I think that's been like a PS Plus in the last few months, and yeah, or maybe it's... Games of Gold. Is it? No, no, but it's it's PS3 only though. There's it's never been released on any other machines. Oh, so really? it's, okay. I'm yeah. Okay, I must think I did one. Yeah, so that I mean that's why I was going to play it on this. I mean they also had like Yakuza games on there as well. I like, got like four and five, which I haven't played yet. Mm. And yeah, you know, I look at that and think oh, I could play those, but then I don't really want to because I know they're going to get remade. And it's like I'd rather play remakes on PS4 than the sort of chunky PS3 versions. So I don't know. But it was an interesting experiment. It's just um, yeah, it's not there though, and I can really see why they're not pushing it. That's it. Shame, yeah. Um, cool. I, I guess we'll see if it improves later. Uh, and you, you've you how you haven't mentioned the biggest game of the week. You finished Deadly Premonition. Oh yeah, yeah, I did finish <laughs> Deadly Premonition. Yeah, uh, yeah, I finished that. That that was a nervous. Like, I mean, I was really worried about going back to that because the like the weekend before it had been an absolute disaster. It was like it was terrible. I'd spent like an hour trying to just walk down some stairs or whatever and it was it was really <laughs> terrible but um yeah i did i mean it was funny because i ended up having to redo bits that i'd done before but then found that i could buy things like buy weapons and things that made everything like significantly easier mm. and so it was it was okay i mean i was i was relieved when it was finished and i have as i said on the stream overall i think probably i enjoyed it not a lot but i think i did enjoy it it was certainly better than most of the like the cage games that i've played um it's just that yeah, the controls and all that kind of thing were the, were the big problems with that game, and uh, yeah, and the pacing was just was appalling, really, really terrible pacing. But mm. um, yeah, it was good. But then and now I, I don't know what to play next. Um, I mean, I'm not going to stream this week, I don't think, because I'm going to have a think about what I'm going to go next. Because yeah, I'm not sure. It's uh, I mean, have you got? Yeah, I know you mentioned things like Alien Isolation, but have you got another? Have you got some other things you, you're tempted to do? Is there anything you want to play? See, there's Until Dawn. I thought about that. Um, because I mean, I I really do like playing these like narrative games like over this because I don't know I just enjoy like engaging with the story and seeing how people are reacting to that as well and I I think that's why I mean I've thought about doing Alien Isolation but I don't think for me that that would work as a stream because I don't think it'd be very interesting for people like to watch but I don't know um I'm thinking what I might do is just do like one stream of that to see how it goes and then if it's no good I'll bin it off and do something different but. Yeah, I, I need I need some more narrative games like to play, but probably not visual novels. I need something that at least you know has some gameplay in it because 
Otherwise, it's just yeah. It's yeah, because the expensive. game from the same days as it did Out of Dawn, their new game's out in August. Is like a horror game called like Man of Medan, or I believe it's Man of Medan. Right. That's like another. I think it's like a it's a horror game, but I think it's in the same sort of style. Oh, okay. uh, that, that's out, that's out in August. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you, you definitely deserve a game that you enjoy and you want to mm-hmm. come back to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because this, I mean, this one was quite a slog and it felt like it went on for a very, very long time. Do you know like, how I mean, long you played it for in the end? Was it, is well, there a game clock or? Yeah, I mean, it said 15 hours or something, but I don't think no that's way. in any no way, way accurate because it's like, I mean, I've been playing this since just after Christmas, like most weeks. And, yeah. you know, for at least like an hour and a half hours, each time, yeah, yeah, an hour and a half to two hours. So I don't know where that's come from, but yeah, that was all over the place as well, the um the stuff. But, yeah, I mean, uh, you, you basically did it in for in uh, in fifteen streams. Yeah, and no way, you know, they were all much longer than an hour. So yeah, that's all right because I thought the game was maybe like forty or fifty hours. So you did it right. Yeah, I mean, I was just pleased when it was over, to be honest, because it was just <laughs> just mostly because it just never ended. It's just it was one thing after another. It's uh, mm. yeah, just it just didn't want to didn't want to go, and that that well, as it, I said. It, was that the main problem with the game? Like, if they, if they, had the fa- if the pacing was better, it, I really think it could, it would have go down as like a classic for me. But yeah, the, the, yeah, the pacing was so bad. Maybe well, so if you want to watch uh, James finish it, it's all on our YouTube channels, uh, or you can go and watch it on on Twitch if you want to see the chat. I assume yeah. when you complete finish the game, the chat went mental. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more relief more than anything. <laughs> Wait, it's, it's over. Yeah, it's 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 done now. You can get on with your life. It's <laughs> it's kind of finished. So. Yeah, I was pleased to get rid of that. So yeah, but good. And that's it. Nice. That's all I played this week. Cool. Would you like to read out the emails? Um, I could. Um, if you I mean, want to email, force yourself. <laughs> if you want to email, well, no, force uh... yourself. Okay, I'm not going to bother reading that now. Gary Stewart says um, he's got some Destiny chat. Um, so I'm pleased. Hey. Sure everyone's going to be pleased. He says, uh, with the new season just around the corner, what weapon type would you like the new pinnacle weapons to be? I've seen a lot of people wanting a new sniper rifle with reduced flinch for crucible. Uh, personally, I'd be interested in what they would do with a weapon that is rarely used, like a sidearm. They did a pretty good job with the Oxygen SR2 Scout Rifle, and they're an underused weapon in the current sandbox. You'll have to order, answer this, Sean, because I have no idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, I also like the sidearms, and I think they are criminally <coughs> underused. Um, I don't know, there's just not many of them and they don't do anything particularly interesting but they did, there was, there was that exotic sidearm they did in Destiny 1 that was fucking amazing, so yeah that would be cool um, big fan of submachine guns, I know there's a pinnacle weapon at the moment that's a submachine gun but it's a crucible one, you have to play shit loads of crucible to get it, it's probably never going to happen um, I mean basically yeah, I pretty much only use submachine guns and auto rifles because I've played that much destiny that it fucks my trigger finger up if i'm like if i'm using a weapon that i have to keep pulling the trigger so basically auto fire weapons <laughs> all the way um yeah okay that's it all right that's fine i've got nothing to add to that um that's just, no worries <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> next email is from cammy Tommen, and he says uh in today's episode sean has had a massive face turn in discovering that shovel knight is amazing one thing he's hopefully mentioned is that the music is fantastic. One of my favourite moments in the game revolves around the music um, in that when you play the Spectre of Torment campaign, which is a prequel to the main game, the King, Queen, Stroke, Knight music has been transposed to a major key to represent the fact that the King and Queen, Knight hasn't been corrupted yet. It's a fairly simple change, but one I really enjoy and think is quite impactful. My question for you is this. Has the music in a game ever surprised you? Can you think of a time where music in a game has made a moment more impactful? Yeah, that's from Cammy. Uh, just to explain, so yeah, the, the King Stroke Queen Knight thing, um, I should have mentioned when I talked about it. So they added, I don't think this was in originally, but at some point they added the feature that basically, so all the, the knights in the game, including the, the player character, the Shovel Knight, you can just switch like the gender. So you can change like how they appear and what pronouns they use. So you just, yeah, whatever you want. You can make anyone male or female or trans or, or whatever, which I just thought was really interesting. Um uh, to actually answer the question, I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, like obviously, like most of like Journey or you know Greece this year or like mm-hmm. last year, technically, um, incredible soundtracks. Uh, what was the um, I'm trying to think in Lost Odyssey? You know, did either of you ever play Lost Odyssey? No, I never no. played that one. Ah oh, man, so it's like it's a pretty good Japanese RPG. Um, it was the you, one, wasn't you, it, that they were trying to like position as a Final Fantasy game for Xbox? 
Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, and the hook is that you play as this guy called Kaim, who is immortal, but he's lost all his memories, which is not new. But um, you'd like, as you go around the world, you'd occasionally like see things, um, and you'd get a, a flashback of, a, of one of his memories. Um, and you realize this guy's been alive for like thousands of years, basically. Um, and like, yeah, so most of these stuff, like, so it's these little short stories that were just delivered by text, but like, but the text would sort of animate or appear in strange ways or, and you know, and there's some really nice like sound design with them, um, but also music as well. And um, yeah, they were often really sad because they were just stories about, um, you know, people like kind of, sort of losing people or just weird situations happening um, as a result of him being immortal um and yeah there, there's one that basically uh, i'm trying to think uh, i don't need to, i don't need to worry about spoiling it but also just running through it now will rob it of all its impact but basically there's a story about um uh, basically about racism and someone ends up committing suicide and the way it's presented in the story as like the second it, it the text appears it's like oh you know it says like she'd killed herself and it's there's just this this little piano bit starts as those words appear on the screen, and honestly, it's it is like getting punched in the stomach. It's unbelievable the way it's it's presented. Um, so that's the one that sticks out to me as just this this I want to say perfect moment. It's so upsetting, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, the way it's done is is perfect. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even for for musical moments, there's tons in Life is Strange, and obviously people mention yeah. the uh, the one we go to Mexico in Red Dead. I never actually got that far, but I know everyone oh, keeps yeah, mentioning yeah. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good bit. I'll tell you uh, what but, also was really good that I can remember was, I mean, you remember like in Combat Evolved, like Halo, like mm-hmm. just like when they when you first land on the beaches in like Sonic oh, yeah. and stuff, and you got that music kicking in. That was that was really good. I mean, that <laughs> yeah, was... I didn't like it as much when like the guitars were kicking in, like Halo Five or yeah. But <laughs> no, in, in the beginning though, it was that stuff, it was but... perfect. That stuff, like you know, to like getting you like worked up and everything. It was. You know, See, like, I've it... never the the Halo theme has never done it for me. I don't know why. No, but that's not the theme. This is oh, like... is it not. Is this a... right? Sorry. No, this is this is um no, this is like completely different. It's um. Okay. Yeah. You say that, Sean, but surely you've seen all those videos of like all the like, you know. Kids singing it in like men's bathrooms in America. <laughs> you, you've seen those videos, right? Yeah, I don't mind the uh, the, yeah. the choir bit. Is fine. It's the yeah, that's I I don't know. I just find it really cheesy and weird for some reason. Um, yeah, I know that I, everyone's going to shout I, me for I, that. I, I'm definitely with you there, James. I was definitely still sort of, you know, there's like key levels and key moments. I'm like, oh yeah, like the music, just like the Halo theme or the Halo music in that bit when you're on the beach and. Well, is, is it the silent cartographer where you go and it starts off and you see like the the um the uh, vehicles on on its side and it's snowing? Is that that yeah. area? No, yeah. that's that's a no, bit later on. But yeah, it's all that just like that yeah, area too got, was like, amazing. It's the drums playing and then you're like whacking people with the butt of your rifle and stuff like that. It's 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 yeah, it, maybe it's cheesy, but it is good. Like it, it works mm. really well for that game. It's um yeah. There's um, the bit in Spec Ops: The Line where they use Glasgow Mega Snake by Mogwai, <laughs> and, oh. it's sort of, and like it's cool as fuck, which completely undermines the game's message in my eyes because it, it's very much at the point of the game where you're supposed to be like, "This is horrible, war is bad, I've lost my mind," but you're just like, "No, this song's cool as fuck, and I'm shooting loads of dudes. This is great." Spec Ops: um, The Line was such a good game. It was so it's, weird. Oh, I, I have mixed feelings about it, and but it does. It, I, it, it that's like a game that really sticks out, even though. I'm not like oh it's a ten out of ten. It's not. Mm. It's just it was. No, weird. yeah, that, that, it, was, it like, tries to say something. Yeah, it tries to say something interesting, which really landed for a lot of people, um, and that in in itself is is worth celebrating. Yeah, because you're looking at um, it. Oh, I, I know what this game is. It's like a standard sort of shooter, but it does so much more now, and it's uh, yeah, interesting. Totally. There's, it just annoyed annoyed me a bit that it's it's like you know the main bad thing that you do, you have literally no choice in. It's like yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah no it's yeah it's an interesting game um i think i can't think of any more examples i mean, I mean off my head. Head. i thought music has like really helped the atmosphere i mean like castlevania games have always been famous for that for me you know it's like yeah the music true. in those is superb but yeah, uh, yeah. Did you, james did you, oh yeah we talked about it the castlevania tv show yeah, yeah, oh, that's that good. Yeah, I enjoyed fucking that. Fucking brilliant, and yeah. again, amazing sort of adaptation and reuse of like the the game music in in certain yeah. places. No, yeah, no sinking old sanctuary though. 
That's the <laughs> that is the king for me. I absolutely love that track. It's fantastic. It's uh, yeah, it's just so many layers of it. But yeah. Okay, uh, next one is okay. This is from Liz Walker. Um, she says, uh, maybe I'm not the target audience, but I recently got an ad for Nintendo's game vouchers, two games for eighty-four pounds, and almost spat my cornflakes out. <laughs> While I get that Nintendo's first-party games often stay at the same price for a long time, forty-two pounds still seems very expensive to me. Despite the ad claiming you could save up to twenty-five to thirty pounds if you buy some first-party titles brand new from the digital store, my personal view is that the digital store is very overpriced unless there's a sale on. And if you do want a brand new game, you're better off uh, buying a physical copy with. Potential for getting trade value later if you don't like the game. What are your guys' thoughts on this deal, and is this something you are likely to use? Well, I completely agree with her because yes, I yeah. saw that when they were like <laughs> saying like only eighty four pounds. You're like, are you mad? <laughs> like presenting it that way is like it's a, just a yeah, crazy way. I mean, I've I've learned to yeah, first party Nintendo stuff especially. I always buy physical now, and it's like the one of the few things that I still buy physical because. Yeah, because of, because of the way they hold their value and the yeah. way they price them on the eShop, it's just yeah, it's insane. Well, it's um, like this this weekend, like Asher wanted to play like Tomodachi Life, and oh yeah. because Rachel's got it on her DS, like her, on her yeah. 3DS, but yeah. it was a pack in with with the 3DS she had, so it was a digital copy. So right. obviously he can't play it unless he uses can't her 3DS, and she gets or, yeah. annoyed. And so I was like looking online to see like how far I could get it. I mean, it's quite old now, thirty five yeah. quid. Like minimum price, yeah, and you just like, there's no cheaper version than that, and like some of them for were a game more that expensive. people, a game that people weren't even particularly hot on at yeah. the time, like. <laughs> but all this Nintendo yeah. stuff is like that. I mean, it is one of the good reasons to buy physical with their stuff because if you mm. need some money quickly, it's quite, it's quite, you know, it's a good platform to have because you know. You I, can, yeah, I like oh, playing Shovel Knight this week. I was, I, I was just like, I'm not going back to Yoshi's Crafted World, am I? Mm-hmm. That's not happening. That's not happening. Just, that is not happening. It's I've not happening. It was a shame, games. but but again, also I'm like, well, I'll probably still get thirty quid on trading for it. So. Yeah. <laughs> See, I can't trade stuff like that in though, Sean. That's the problem. Because oh, you get because my son wants to play it and he'll get annoyed yep. and it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why I keep saying I'm, I would like to get rid of Kirby, but I can't because he still plays just that. Just put him on the demo. It's fine. <laughs> he, <laughs> he notices. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. <sighs> okay. Right. Next yep. one. Yep. Okay, so uh, SMW, or Stuart, says, uh, My wife and I are starting to think about having a baby, and as most of the best parenting advice I've heard has come from you guys over the years, that's really worrying. I was going yeah, to say, that's, that's a low bar. <laughs> I was, I was going, hoping to ask a non-gaming question. Before having kids, how did you know if you could afford them? Was it something you factored in before trying? Do you look back and feel you over or underestimated, etc.? We're looking to move and can afford somewhere a little bigger with the cost of uh, just us both, but don't want to overstretch for the future. Uh, loving the show as always, SMW. Cheers. Um, I, I, it's, I think it's one of those where it's just like you'll just make it work because you've yes. got no choice. That's exactly <laughs> what I think with this because we we yeah. didn't. I didn't think to be honest about that too much. Like you know, yeah. can we afford on that? And which was weird because when when we had my daughter, as I said before, we had her in China, and you mm. actually have to pay for the birth. Like it cost a grand, like yeah, just, yeah. To, just for the hospital, you know, to have to have her be born, <laughs> but. Even at that time, you don't really think about that because you're just thinking, you know, it's a baby and all that kind of thing. It's yeah, but I think it's not been as expensive as I was expecting it to be. Like I thought it was going to yeah. be super much more expensive than it is. Although I am finding now that as they get older, it's becoming significantly more expensive um, because yeah, things, yeah, can things become become more. So, yeah, yeah like... start off cheap <laughs> compared yeah. to now. <laughs> Well, because yeah, because initially you have all the you know like the cot and you know if you're bottle feeding, then there's like all sort of you know sorts of kit you can get for that, and obviously the cost of formula, um, nappies you absolutely burn through. They're pretty cheap these days, though. Um, yeah, they're not that much. Yeah, it's it's not too bad. Yeah, so yeah, so there's the you know there's the initial kit, um, but then a lot of that you can either get secondhand or sell yours on once you're done. Um, you know, well if you're only having one kid. Yeah, or or, um, or or if your relatives, like uh, friends and family, are very very yeah. happy to give you sort of like uh, baby grows that they might have used for like two weeks, and then the the kid grew out of it, which happens yeah. a lot, yeah. um, way more yeah. than you might imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, like I mean, if you've got relatives or friends or friends or family have like kids recently or the last mm -hmm. few years, there's no no doubt they will they will have things they they will give you or hand down to you, and then yeah. when you buy stuff, yeah, you, you sometimes you can use things for like. 
a week or two and that's it and they've already grown out of it or they've yep. destroyed it so we, we, we've got stuff that I, I don't think we ever got around to using yeah same here yeah um, if so, back yeah. to some people like yeah we might give us stuff like, oh yeah that, that's amazing and then yeah as, as you said we've still got it not yep. used um <laughs> And also, yeah, when they're, when they're oh, really God, young, you don't have to spend like tons of money and stuff on like toys and things. Like, really, no, because they don't no, give no, a shit. Definitely not. And no. they don't care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and for the first also, two years, yeah. you can get, you can just get like a bottle, like a you know, a plastic bottle, empty it out, <laughs> put in some rocks or whatever, the old put rice. it back on, <laughs> yeah, and they'll yeah, just shake it. A bottle. And they, they, they shake it. They think it's great. You know, it's yep. like <laughs> you could just yeah, do stuff the, like that. The first two Christmases, you can get away with basically one toy. Yeah, and it's fine. Yeah. But then I mean, you later... stop the rest of your family buying loads of stupid oh, shit. Oh no, of course not. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, everyone wants to like treat treat the baby, so yeah. don't worry, they won't go about. But yeah, you you can yeah. get away with it. But like, well, once they did was two, I'm like, okay, this is, I can't get away with just rewrapping the uh, plastic bottle of rice again. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's time to get out some actual presents. I'll tell you but what. Yeah, like... Chen, Chen got a sewing machine out of this. I, I, oh, I yeah. probably shouldn't tell you about that. It's <laughs> what? What did she got a sewing machine out of? This? Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's uh, ominous. Um, yeah, I mean, I, finances as as with most things parenting related, you know, like it's very easy to like wonder if you're ready or not. Um, like the answer is probably not, but then no. once it happens, you've got no choice but to, yeah. to just deal with yeah, exactly, it, and, yeah. and you'll yeah. be fine. Um, so yeah, like don't worry too much about it. Ba- like, basically, there will never be a perfect time, and you'll never yeah. have enough money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because so however much money you've got, you know, your spending will will accommodate, you know, yeah. whatever you're earning. And once you have a kid, you will have less to spend on yourself. That's just the that's way it just, is. yeah. And but you'll work it out. It's it's yeah. fine. And that that's the yeah. main thing that I was just whenever anybody asked me about like having kids and stuff is I was just say it's like you'll work it out and it'll be fine. Yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. that is how it is, and it's like. But- you know. Yeah, but you sent your email like we're looking to move and find someone a little bit bigger. You will need someone bigger with all the shit you're going to buy for the kids. Yeah. So <laughs> I would maybe move move there now, so you got the room for all the stuff because you will not believe how much stuff they will have. Yeah. Um. So yeah, maybe move there and have a kid. But you know, we're not your parents. So you do what you want, mate. But also, yeah, just, just don't worry do about that. it. Yeah, it's yeah. Fine. Don't worry about it. It's uh, whatever happens happens. But you, you'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, man. Okay. Matt tweets. Okay, Matt tweets. It's at Computer Game Pod on Twitter if you want to. Matt tweet us. Luke Watts um, has tweeted in, is this some kind of weird erotic dream I once had? Or did Sean once make a video where he reviewed games that were green screened onto his bed? I remember it being really funny, a really funny way to present a video. Why did he stop making videos and would he consider doing it again? I think you remember um, this. Was I definitely remember this these. Real. I used to love these. Yeah, this was uh, so this was a series I did for Midnight Resistance. I did it with my friend Pete. It was called Under the Blanket, um, and yeah, it was weird. Like it was one of those things where we we made it, and like a, you know, like people we like you know, like Rav Florence and Dan Marr and stuff were like retweeting it, like oh my god, this is such a good idea, but just hardly anyone watched it. <laughs> and it was obviously it's one of those. It's quite a lot of work to set up because. You know, we had to set up like an entire bedroom to do it. Um, but yeah, I, I had wondered if it would be funny to just like do one of my streams like that one day. <laughs> oh, you totally should. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll, I'll 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 have a think. Um, I mean, I, Pete's Pete's still around, but I've not, I've not seen him for a while. He's still alive, is he? Um, okay. Yeah, he's, he's still alive. Yeah, 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 I, um, I thought you were going to answer that. It's like, well, well, Pete passed away, and um, <laughs> so I don't do it anymore. Pete died. Next I didn't really question. fancy doing it anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's it, again, it, like because you know we did that, and when you know when we did it, we we're like, this seems like quite an obvious idea, but I've not seen anyone else do it, so why not? I would have thought by now someone else would have ripped it off, but not that we've seen. No, so this yeah. ripe for a, a rebrand. Let's bring it yep. into the TCGS fold and uh, <laughs> make a bigger Patreon stretch then. goal. If we get to a thousand pounds, I will do my Tuesday streams. In bed oh, with the well, game. Don't say that, Sean. That's green screened on. <laughs> like, I'm gonna add to the Patreon tonight. Maybe if I just did it like on the sofa with a, a blanket on me, I'll be topless. Obviously, you got to give them something, haven't you? But um... <laughs> yeah, but there's something. I think that it, but you'll be you'll be on your side and playing. Yeah, yeah I mean, you should do that definitely. Okay. <laughs> Is that will we get banned from Twitch? I mean, there's nothing actually obscene about it. I guess it depends. Well, it depends. Totally covered up. Depends what game um, you're playing. Yeah, 
That's if true. you play everybody's goal, things might happen. Who knows? <laughs> uh, Big Jim has tweeted it. Farley was talking about this is actually wait, probably feedback, but it's here now. Big Jim Farley was talking about being a bit burnt out on games at the moment and just playing Switch games. I was playing 100 hours each of Red Dead 2 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I was in the same place. I've since been playing Farm Together on Switch and it's been the perfect palate cleanser. There's a real Animal Crossing vibe to it. James, you should give it a try. What's this called again? It's this called um, Farm Together. Yeah, I know you've heard about it because they talked about it on Play One Podcast. CJ and his daughter playing it. Farm Together. It depends on how much of a like how much of a busy work thing it is. That's the what concerns me. Busy work. Well, anyway, you, you, you should give it a go. Uh, Futo exercise with Sean's incredible Bell's Kitchen out of the way. You, have you all got other ideas on non gaming endeavours? Um, yeah, uh, I know James and no. David are doing star calls, <laughs> but as you know, we're starved of content. Um, uh, it's just it's finding the time in it. Um, yeah, I, I, mean, right I, now I didn't it's have anything. Thing. Yeah, I didn't have anything in mind. Um, I'm open to the idea of doing sort of less gamey stuff, but yeah, that is time. Yeah, it definitely is a time thing at the moment. It's, it's, um, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm always up for doing more, but we haven't really had the time right now to plan anything more than we've... I mean, it, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. We've got we've done the first Bell's Kitchen. We've done the first mm-hmm. um, Patreon podcast. That's out now for $5 patrons. And yeah. uh, Star Calls is very, very close as well. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy we've got this whole stuff, the first round of stuff out there. Now yeah. we start trying to plan it better potentially for the next next round and see yes what... we don't have to do shit loads in one week <laughs> yeah the last week we've done like well we did like, Game of Thrones finale was last Monday so we pushed yep. the pod to Tuesday yep. and then Wednesday we did the the Life is Strange spoiler cast mm-hmm. Thursday off Friday we did um, I Deadly Premonition Friday yeah Deadly Premonition Saturday yep. we did the computer game show bonus show for Patreon Sunday Bloodborne and Bell's Kitchen so it's been a yep. mad odd week. Me and um, a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, and and Starkles, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, it's been intense. But we'll try and we'll try and spread it out a bit more. Yeah, but I, I'm well up doing non gaming stuff. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I yeah, can't... in terms of non gaming stuff, like the yeah the you know computer game bonus show, um, there's potential for us to do less gamey stuff on there. Um, but we're gonna sort of feel it out, see what people want from it. So yeah, definitely, we'll see for sure. Um, Athena, and what's your? Are we sorry? A few directors also said, "Is it is Starkles going to be on the main pod feed? No, it's going to be on a separate feed in like iTunes and podcast services. But we'll let you know that. Um, it will be on our Twitter feed, of course. But no, it will yep. be on a separate feed. Um, Athena, Allen, what is your most laughable E three prediction that would be completely pointless putting in the show? Mine is Master Chief Collection on Switch. I mean, I'd play that, but." <laughs> Uh, I mean, you would be I don't happy know. because you hate the music. Um, yeah, laughable E3 prediction. We're completely pointless putting in the show. Um, fuck, I don't know. Is this laughable because it's obvious to happen, or laughable well, because it's I mean, just like, stupid? Laughable as it never happened. Yeah. Okay, uh, like Sony actually do turn up at E3 and they were just faking it out. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> would be a big joke. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, James, we should stop. This is ruining all our surprises. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I actually, would say, sure, was this you? Like actually, like tweet this in. What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the, what's the weirdest stuff you're gonna make up? To yeah, yeah. lol, guys. Um, uh, mine would be um, Anthem Remaster. <laughs> <laughs> Anthem HD. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll end with um, Oodles at Oodles O'Dim. E3 is coming up, and it's time for that question we get asked every year: best and worst personal E3 moments for you all. I mean, when I think when I think of worst, I mean, basically E3 for me is. It's all worst and best at the same time. I mean, <laughs> some of the best moments are the Can't worst really moments. Can't separate it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you know, obviously the one where the guy was playing like connects and he like we like we're like boom and he put his leg up. His leg was all like mangled up because it was all like connect weird not geometry of his leg. <laughs> that was really funny. Yeah. Uh, Ravi drums. Ravi drums. I was going to say that's, a, that's very much a combined worst and best moment. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Fucking hell, that Ravi, was weird. Ravi drums on weird. Was, was that Wii music? It, it was. was it? it was Wii yeah. music. Yeah. I mean that's still hilarious to watch now if you if you look it up like the fact that it just clearly didn't work, yeah. Um, oh yeah, and just yeah, and the way he had his stupid haircut and everything, it was oh, it's perfect. Um, what else was was? I really mean that moment bad. last year with Jesse 
Jesse Wellens, uh, the YouTuber, uh, where oh, he was like yeah. in Need for Speed. <laughs> oh, I felt so bad because I've watched his stuff for years, and I, I, I do like him, but oh, I felt so bad. It was a horrendous, horrendous <laughs> what mess was, up. Um, the year when James Cameron came out on stage and talked about Avatar for about half an hour. That was bad. That was one of the Ubisoft ones, and it was like three oh, yeah, in the morning, yeah. and it was that was a miserable experience. Not not as miserable as twenty five minutes of Super Smash Bros. Sean. That that was the worst. <laughs> that was that was that was dire. Um, Absolutely yeah. awful. That was yeah. sitting there and we're like, especially they got to the point where we were like, wouldn't it be funny if they do this for the whole show? <laughs> oh, then they are doing it for the whole show. Yeah, yeah. there is nothing else. <laughs> it was just it was dreadful. Well, yeah, because we were just sitting there. Like, There'll be something at the end. There's got to be something in the end. Yeah. Nope. That was it. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, in terms of like best moments, like actual, was it? Did Bloodborne get properly announced at E three? I think it did. I, I don't remember that one because I remember it. I remember watching an E three, and it was like from the Hidetaka Miyazaki, and everyone like, oh my god, um, <laughs> and that was that was a, that was a good little moment. Um, See, E three is just amazing, isn't it? Like it, it like, I mean. Most of the things, when I get like really excited, maybe I'm watching Sony's press conference at like two in the morning, and I'm like, oh my God, you know, maybe I'm like tweeting in all caps, or maybe I'm not tweeting at all, I'm just like, it's like you know, <laughs> but, but like, it, it, it's, I guess I'm just like fully caught up in the hype and like the moment, and maybe it's also like the tiredness and the fact it's like two or three in the morning at that point, but it's just, you know, I just absolutely love that thing where you basically can't type quick enough because you need to like <laughs> go, oh my God, they're doing it. And like, here it comes. You know, waiting for like the big moments and maybe I don't drop, maybe I do. But um, yeah, E3 is just the, the greatest week. It's just the hype and the excitement and it's all stupid. I mean, yep. you just like look for any of my, I mean, I don't, but you know, like if, if, if I were to look for any of my previous like E3 like tweets, it's just like, what? what's... No, don't do that. But, you know, <laughs> that's part of it, isn't it? It's part of all the ridiculous excitement <laughs> and hype and the, oh, my God, what is this? And, like, when a trailer starts, you're like, what is this trailer? What is it? Oh, my God, oh my God it's that. Oh, my God. Oh, no, it's Escape 4. Oh, no, it's some other indie one. Yeah. That's, that's oh, good. no, it's, it's not. <laughs> and, it's, and then it's you're, like, up and down so quick. It's definitely less fun, though, since they, like, most of them stopped doing, like, live shows and stuff, though, because that's when you've yeah. got, like, the potential for hilarity, you know, because of, like, <laughs> because of when things go wrong and stuff. I mean, that... Obviously, yeah, you know, there's totally. the Konami one and you know all that kind of stuff. It's that that's when it's really good. I think it's when it's. Just... I just thought, are you, are you going to talk over the conferences this year? I don't know. I hadn't thought of that. Um, did we do it last year? What did we do last year? I don't we think didn't... we did. I don't think no, we did. We, did, we did reaction ones like shortly afterward. Uh, each one. No, that's we? right. Yeah, yeah, we... yeah. No, I don't remember what we did. I've... You're asking oh. the wrong person there. Okay. It's all. <laughs> it's all a blur. Oh. I was. Off, I, just, so, uh, I would be gutted on on missing out on that, but uh, yeah. Yeah, but we need to plan it because actually, um, next week is our prediction show. Oh shit! So we need a, to get, get a week off. We please. need to get that yeah. sorted, and then <laughs> yeah. So next week, if we prediction show, yeah. and then a week after is uh, Sean is leaving the internet, and then we'll uh, we're actually hopefully going to record. Like, so you're leaving like Friday the seventh. We're actually hoping to yeah. get a pod out. Uh, on Wednesday, as usual, uh, we're hoping to yeah. record on the Tuesday night, but we will see. I think that's fair. It maybe it'll be a, a day, uh, a, a, maybe it'll be day to Thursday. I'm fairly sure we'll be called for for Wednesday, but yeah. Yeah, E3 is upon us. I haven't really. We've been so busy with other things. I haven't really had a chance to sort of like plan and really, you know. I, I you know, when Tom said a prediction show next week, it's like, oh my god, you're right. It really is <laughs> this week. Um, <laughs> yeah, terrifying. I, I can't. Well, at least at least we haven't got to do predictions for Sony. That makes things easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a blow, isn't it? What are you doing, Sony? Mm. Come on. Stop ruining the fun. And right, I, I, is, that, um, is that it? That's yeah. it for tweets, yeah. Hey, wicked. Um, Matt, do you want to do the end bit? Yeah, I mean, um, basically for streams, like James has finished Daily Premonition. Congratulations, uh, James. That's over now. So currently we're just down to two. We've got Sunday nights. I'm streaming Bloodborne Sundays. Uh, Sunday night from half past eight. Uh, and then Tuesday night, uh, Sean is playing uh, an indie game of his choosing in Play by the Bell. Uh, Tuesday nights from 9 p.m. Uh, they're both on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the computer game show. If you've got Twitch Prime, you also now, if you're Amazon Prime, sorry, you have Twitch Prime, which means you basically get one free sub a month. Please think about going to our channel and uh, and subscribing. Uh, I know you updated the app. I know you like you showed me that the other day, Sean, but I don't mm. think you can subscribe. I think it just tells you if you have 
<laughs> already subscribed. Oh no, I, I managed to subscribe with it the other day. Oh, did you? Awesome. Yeah, okay. uh, sorry, no, it was yesterday when you were streaming Bloodborne. That was that was how I did oh, it. Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah, last week we mentioned that the app was is terrible, but now since we mentioned it last week, they've updated the app so you can actually subscribe on mobile. But failing that, just go, uh, just just go to desktop. Uh, we've also got a website, computergameshow.com, with uh, our, you know uh, the episodes, the videos, and all that sort of stuff, and we're on Patreon. Of course we are. Patreon.com slash TCGS. You can get uh, a the TCGSBS bonus show uh, or TCGBS. Uh, that's <laughs> out now for five dollars and above patrons. Um, and uh, and yeah, you can support the show uh, and and get some exclusive stuff. Uh, and thanks to you, we had absolute gold like Bell's Kitchen, which is a uh, up there with moment of the year for me. <laughs> Cheers, Brilliant, man. Sean. So impressed. Right, that's us. A few um, predictions next week. Get those predictions oh ready. Oh, God. We need to decide on a format, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, do we? Do we just, or is it, do we well, just no, write stuff down? Well, just like, oh, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll call like first game shown and, and all that stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah we, need, we need to decide on that shit. Right. Cool. Thanks for listening. Much appreciated. Thanks for all the support on Twitch and Patreon and that. It is very good that people do that. Yeah, it's um, amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's thanks. Thanks, everyone, from the bottom of my heart for letting us be natural. Good night. Good night. And also, I love the killing as well.